ladies and gentlemen. We are live for another week of National Arena League football here in Sioux City, Iowa. We're inside the Tyson Event Center tonight for Friday night action between the Sioux City Bandits and the Colorado Spartans. I'm Braden Butler. Thank you for joining me this evening. It is the third game for both of these teams in the National Arena League, and it is the only game happening tonight. Let's take a look at these two teams. Sioux City enters at 2-0 on the year, coming off of a 42-24 win over Oklahoma on Saturday. That was just this last Saturday. It's also the first NAL game of the year that's not against Oklahoma, as the Bandits and the Flying Aces played back-to-back -back games against each other to open the 2024 campaign. Colorado enters at 0-2 on the year, with a couple of losses coming to the Beef and the Cobras, who are, surprise, surprise, both very good teams in the National Arena League this year. Both games were within 12 points as well. So Colorado, despite being 0-2, is a very competitive team. A few bounces go another way. We could be looking uh, very differently at the Spartans team in the first year of the organization. This is their first year of operation. They're coming in as a new expansion team for the 2024 season. Let's take a look at last week's games for both these teams. Starting with Sioux City, they defeated Oklahoma 42-24, as we mentioned. Quarterback Josh Hollins had a great day in relief, stepping in. Did not get the start, stepped in in relief of an injury. And he went 8 for 11 in that game last week. 102 yards, four touchdowns through the air, another 38 yards and two more touchdowns on the ground. He was exceptional in relief. Now he's going to get the start this week. We'll see what he can do from the get-go for Josh Hollins. Carlton Watkins was a star on defense for Sioux City. Five tackles and a pass breakup. Now another thing for the team as a whole, they more than doubled their week one passing yardage total. 107 total yards last week as a team compared to 47 in week one. The defense allowed touchdowns on the first and last Oklahoma drives, but only three points outside of those drives. So through the middle chunk of the game, the Sioux City defense was stout, only allowing a field goal. They did allow, there was one other touchdown scored by Oklahoma, but that was on a kick return by Rashad Ridley at the opening kickoff of the second half. Looking at Colorado, they lost on the road to Carolina last week, 44 to 35. I'm gonna read you quarterback Jason Whitaker's stats and I you understand, Colorado likes to air the ball out. We're gonna be talking about that a lot tonight. Whitaker went 25 for 41 last week against Carolina, 237 yards, five touchdowns, but also three interceptions, helping lead to that loss to a very good Carolina Cobras team on the road in Greensboro. It's air raid offense for, for Colorado. 237 yards through the air, only 18 on the ground last week. Steven Newbold, wide receiver, had nine catches for 108 yards and two touchdowns. Deontay Rarick had eight catches for 64 yards and two touchdowns as well. And on defense, Javaris Thompson has been listed on the roster as both wide receiver and defensive back, but he's made his bread on a defense as a defender these first couple weeks of the season. Eight tackles and a pick last week. He's also the team's leading tackler. Looking at some team stats for the season so far for the Sioux City Bandits. They're scoring 39.5 points per game, 160.5 yards per game, six passing touchdowns, five rushing touchdowns for the offense. It's a very balanced attack for these Bandits. And defensively, they're allowing 24 points per game, 161.5 yards. They forced two turnovers and have three sacks so far this season. For Colorado, they're scoring 33.5 points per game, 233 yards per game, 209.5 of those through the air. We're going to keep talking about it. This is an air raid offense for this Colorado Spartans team. They're trying to sneak up and maybe surprise some people in their first year as an organization. They're very well coached. Coach Shaw has done a good job so far for, through the first couple weeks of the season. And like we talked about, a couple things bounced their way the first two weeks. They could have wins over either Omaha or Carolina, who are two of the top three teams in the NAL right now. Record-wise, the third of those teams being the Bandits that they are playing today. Nine touchdowns all through the air this season for Colorado as well. Defensively, they're allowing 44.5 points per game. Got a few things to clean up on that end, allowing 204 yards per game. They do have a one turnover force this season. That was Thompson's pick last week. And uh, no sacks so far listed on the stat sheet for Colorado. Don't know if that is a mistype or if they just haven't been able to get the pass rush going so far. I know Carolina and Omaha have some very good offensive lines they're very proud of. Uh, the beef bring the beef down in Omaha, and I know Carolina has always worked well in the trenches. Let's see if they can get back to the quarterback this week. We'll see what Josh Hollins can do if he faces any pressure. Let's look at some individual stat leaders for both teams, starting with Sioux City. Their leader right now in passing is Josh Hollins. Did not play in week one. Came in in relief in week two. Has 102 yards passing, four touchdowns, no picks. 72.7% completion percentage. Actually, we're getting to our player introductions here for Sioux City. So we're going to talk about those individual stats 
in a little bit. We'll do the player introductions here and then also talk through and then also go to our national anthem. We'll come back and look at some individual leaders for both these teams as well as key players and keys to the game. So far being announced here for the Sioux City Bandits is number one, Xavier Spann came out first, the 6'1", 180-pound defensive back out of Morningside. And then number two, the franchise himself, Fred Bruno, the 5'8", 200-pound wide receiver out of Wayne State University. Next man out of the tunnel is the 6'4", 205-pound wide receiver out of Ole Miss. It's number four, Sammy Epps. Two catches on the season for him for four yards. One of those did go for six. Almost had a long touchdown last week, just went out of his hands. Coming out next, the 5'10", 175 pound defensive back out of Tiffin University, Carlton Watkins, wearing the number five tonight. 11 tackles on the year, which is one of the most on the team. Also has one and a half TFLs and one forced fumble from his defensive back spot. A fresh face for Sioux City. Only his second week with the Bandits organization. Did not participate in training camp at all. So just signed before last week's game. Had two carries for five yards in week one, but allows another running back in the backfield to go along with Drew Prohaska. Got a number change tonight. Usually wearing number 29 is number seven this evening for Leslie Owusu, the rookie receiver out of the University of Northern Iowa. 6'2", 200 pounds. He had two catches for 13 yards so far this season. They call him the Swiss Army Knife coming out next. He's listed as a linebacker, but he does it all for this Bandits team. 14 tackles, one and a half TFLs, and one sack for Braden Mainz, the 6'1", 235-pound athlete out of Simpson College. Big body in the trenches coming out next for Sioux City, the 6'1", 320-pound defensive lineman out of the University of Sioux Falls. It's Randall Blash, has a couple tackles so far this season. Played his college ball right here in Sioux City. He's staying with it for the Bandits. Ossie Tapua out next, wearing number 12. Eight tackles, one and a half sacks, one and a half TFLs for the 6'3", 235-pound defensive lineman. You got to cover this guy when he gets off the bus, basically. Brandon Shepard has more touchdowns than he has games played for the Sioux City Bandits so far in his career. The 6'3", 210-pound wide receiver out of Oklahoma State has three catches on the season for 50 yards and two touchdowns. All of that coming in last week's game. He did not play in week one. Out next is the linebacker, Zach Slugger. 6'2", 245 out of Morningside. Had three tackles and two pass breakups last week for the Bandits. That was his first game of the season for the long time. Bandit didn't play in week one. Here's the man of the hour, too sweet to be sour. It's Josh Hollins, the starting quarterback this week for the Sioux City Bandits. 8 for 11, 102 yards and four touchdowns through the air last week, adding another couple scores on the ground. Get our first look at Javon Woods this season, too, the rookie out of Briar Cliff, the 6'1", 220-pound linebacker. Plays all over the defense. He's getting his first action tonight. Another member of the Briarcliff Charger contingent here in Sioux City. Longtime running back Drew Prohaska. 20 carries on the year for 64 yards and a touchdown. He also has got seven catches for another 64 yards and a score through the air. Here out comes Antonio Pierce, the 6'1", 180 pound defensive back for the Sioux City Bandits. Getting a look at him tonight. Has his season cut short last year due to injury. Been healthy so far this year. He's a key piece. Out next, we got a 5'11", 170-pound rookie out of Southeastern Oklahoma State, Sherman Gilbert. Two tackles, one pass breakup, and one interception so far this season for Gilbert. That came back in week one. A long arm of the law is out next. Number 26, the six-foot-tall, 260-pound defensive lineman, Devin Gronhagen. 11 tackles, half a sack, four and a half TFLs through two weeks of the season. And his fans are worried if there'd be a gap after the losses of Dejon Emery and Claude Davis from last year's team. Devin Gronhagen has filled that role well so far. Out next, it's another athlete for Sioux City. He's listed as a wide receiver, but he's been taking snaps at defensive back as well. It's the number 27, Jakari Christian. 6'1", 210-pound football player out of Dakota State. Starting to get some more hog mollies in the trenches. Here's 6'4", offensive lineman Omar Roberts. Weighs in at 310 pounds out of Carthage College. More than number 55 this evening. 
Out next is number 70, the 6'6", 325-pound offensive lineman out of Wilmington College. It's Sterling Clark. Out next, number 78, it's Rashad Mungro capping off the offensive line. 6'6", 330 pounds out of Eastern Kentucky University. Coach Loban coming out, the defensive coordinator for the Sioux City Bandits team. Bringing his family with him. His daughter celebrating a birthday next week. Happy birthday to her. Scott Jensen, the offensive coordinator for these Sioux City Bandits. Over 200 career passing touchdowns for him. Longtime Bandits quarterback, now the offensive coordinator. Speaking a long time with the Bandits. You can't tell the story of the Sioux City Bandits without Herb Strobeen on the field and now off of it. Over a decade of experience as a head coach now, over 100 wins officially as well in the indoor game. Congrats to Herb Strobeen on that. Got the national anthem coming up here shortly. We'll take a look at some key players for both teams. And then hopefully we'll get to the coin toss and the tick kickoff here in the National Arena League. We are live from the Tyson Event Center in Sioux City, Iowa. We'll keep it rolling here after the National Anthem. Big thank you to Morgan Pack for singing the national anthem today here inside the Tyson Event Center for Sioux City Bandits football. As always, thank you to the Boy Scouts for presenting the colors. This week it was Troop 186 presenting the colors for the national anthem. 
keep it rolling here, talking about some stat leaders for both teams before we were getting into the player introductions. The passing leader currently is Josh Hollins for the Sioux City Bandits, 102 yards through the air, eight for 11. All those coming last week, two, four touchdowns, two more on the ground. The rushing leader for Sioux City is Drew Prohaska, 64 yards on the ground, 3.2 yards per carry, and a touchdown on 20 carries. He's also the team's leading receiver in terms of yardage, 64 yards through the air for him with on seven catches. One touchdown there as well. A couple of players are tied for the team high in touchdown receptions. Fred Bruno and Brandon Shepard each have two apiece. Leader in tackles for the Bandits is Braden Mainz, the linebacker. 14 tackles, one and a half TFLs, one sack for him out of Simpson College. Look at your leaders for the Colorado Spartans. Passing leader Jason Whitaker. They like to air the ball out over in Colorado. 42 for 65 through two games for 419 yards. 9.98, basically 10 yards per completion. Completes just under 65% of his passes, nine touchdowns to five interceptions. He's also the team's leading rusher at eight carries for 38 yards, just under five yards per carry. Leading receiver is Steven Newbold. 14 catches for 155 yards and three touchdowns through the air for him, 11 yards per reception with a long of 23. Leader in tackles right now for Colorado is Javaris Thompson. 15 tackles for him and an interception. He got that last week. Player to keep an eye on here for Colorado. Looking at the National Arena League standing, Sioux City sits atop the National Arena League right now, tied with the Omaha Beef, each at 2-0. Third is Carolina Cobras at 3-1. And, and then Colorado Spartans, Oklahoma Flying Aces, Idaho Horsemen, all tied in fourth right now, winless on the season. Still early on 0-2, but these Spartans, they are a very, very good team. It's not like they were out there getting blown out by Carolina and Omaha, who on paper look like two of the best teams in the league this season. They're both close games, a couple bounces go their way. We could be talking about an upstart Colorado team that's one and one or two and oh after beating some of the best the National Arena League has to offer. The Bandits cannot overlook these Colorado Spartans just because of their record. The talent does not indicate the 0-2 record for them. So we get some key players for both these teams. We'll start with Colorado. On offense, it's going to be Jason Whitaker. The offense will go as far as their quarterback will take them for the Spartans, and that's Jason Whitaker out of Davenport University. Just talked about his stats. They like to air that ball out. 65 pass attempts already through two weeks in the season for Whitaker. It is going to be important to get that passing game going today. He is going to be the heart of it. Javaris Thompson going to be your key player on defense. Team's leading tackler at 15 tackles. Also got that pick last week. They're going to want to force mistakes are the Spartans uh, from this Sioux City offense throughout the night. Give their offense more possessions, and the more times you put the ball in Whitaker's hands, the more times he's going to throw that thing around the yard. Your X-Factor player today for Colorado is going to be Steven Newbold. He's been the leading receiver so far with 14 catches for 155 yards. If he's able to work his magic around the Bandit secondary and find the open spaces, provide easy looks for his quarterback Whitaker, it could be a long night for this Bandit's defense. Looking at your key players now for Sioux City. Josh Hollins is your key player on offense. Getting his first start of the season after coming in relief last week. Played very well. We've talked enough about it. But he, he, did, a, he did a great job last week coming in and taking over for 8 for 11 for 4 touchdowns. Carlton Watkins could be your key player on defense. Had a good game last week. Forced a fumble that the Bandits did recover. Had 5 tackles as well. His season stats for 11 tackles. Two pass breakups, one and a half TFLs, and one forced fumble. Keys to victory for both teams on, for the Bandits. It's going to be controlling possession on offense and lit, limiting the damage through the air on defense. The less the ball is in the hands of Jason Whitaker, the less damage he can do through the air. So it's going to be important to control the ball on offense and then do your best to shut down that passing attack on defense. For Colorado, offensively, find a bit of a balance. You know, the, the passing attack, while it is prolific, if you become a one-trick pony in any league, it's going to be easier to clue in and stop you. Maybe try to establish a run game today a little bit more than they have been in the past. We'll see what the Spartans' offense can do. And defensively, it's going to be forced mistakes. If you can rattle Holland, uh, Josh Hollins early in this Sioux City Bandits offense, you can get that ball back for your own offense. Could be a lot. Excuse me there. Had a hiccup. Could be an easy way to get free points on your offense of your own. If you put up enough points early on, you can really put the Bandits in a hole here. Third game of the season for both these teams here live in Sioux City. Should be a lot of fun. Both teams taking the field to kick off here. 7.05 p.m. here inside the Tyson Event Center. That's central time for any Colorado fans out there. 6.05 Mountain. Anywhere around the world. I can't do the math for all the time zones. But if you're out on the East Coast, 8.05. If you're out on the West Coast, it's 5.05. Thank you for joining us here. April 12th, 2024. Little known fact, 
my 23rd birthday is today, so uh, hopefully it's a happy birthday for me and we get a fun game here in the National Arena League. Braden Mines to kick off for the Bandits. Colorado will receive. Who's ready for Khalil Hayes and Steven Newbold back deep to return for the Spartans. Mines marching off his steps now as we're ready to get going here in Sioux City. Checks with his men, starts his run up, and we are underway here in the National Arena League. High end over end kick, drifting towards the stands is gonna go out of play. At the side of the end zone, gonna be a souvenir for a fan, earliest souvenir we've had in a while. Ball did not bounce before going over the board, so it will be placed at the 20 yard line. First and 10 from their own 20 for Colorado here. It's our first look at this Spartans offense and Jason Whitaker. Whitaker out of Davenport University. Going to be a key player for the Spartans all season long, but especially today as they're in the hunt for their first win. See if the Bandits defense can put some pressure on them. Only three sacks total as a team right now. Asi Tapua leading the charge there with one and a half. Empty set here for Whitaker. New Bolden Hay is going to go in motion. About five yards back from the offensive line. Whitaker takes the snap, chest high, looking left side, passes immediately, finds a man open down the left sideline, fresh set of downs and more. He gets up to around the 15, 14 yard line. It's gonna be a new set of downs already for Colorado. That was Rarick. the Bandits defense wanted first play of the game for a gain of about 14 yards. Brings up second and 10 from the 14 yard line. Whitaker now in the shotgun again, empty set. Same formation as last time with Newbold and Hayes in motion. He's got some time looking right side, looking for Steven Newbold. He's gonna be pushed out along the boards at the 10 yard line, gain of about four. Braden Mines and Antonio Pierce were there to stop the progression of Newbold, but good catch over the middle. Plenty of time in the pocket, too, for Whitaker. Allowed, it, allowed Newbold to get all the way across the formation on that crosser. First time we'll see a running back today in the backfield. That's Kadarius Campbell. Laker sends his men to the line. A little pitch out to Campbell left side. He's going to be brought down. He's Groenhagen got there first. He was able to spin away, and then Braden Meitzer picked up the pieces. Loss of a couple yards there, brings up third down. Almost back to the original line of scrimmage. It's gonna bring up third and nine. Here with the National Arena League football. Colorado Spartans taking on the Sioux City Bandits inside the Tyson Event Center. Whitaker in the shotgun again, Campbell on his left hip pocket. Whitaker sends his men to the line, five seconds on the play clock, takes the snap, chest high, looking right side, he's under some pressure, trying to scramble away, does get away from Tapua, still keeping his eyes downfield, now it's cut back, Whitaker finds Campbell out of the backfield, nobody there to stop him, he's gonna get in for the first score of the game, the footwork of Whitaker, able to keep the play alive in the backfield and get it to his running back, Campbell, for the touchdown, that's Kadarius Campbell's 10th catch of the season and his third touchdown. 6-0 your score now here in Sioux City. After a great scramble drill from Whitaker. And that brings in the kicker, Darian Crow. <whistles> Snap is down, hold is down. Kick from Crow just wide to the right. No good. 6-0 it'll remain here in Sioux City. But the Spartans strike first over the Bandits on their opening offensive possession. Jason Whitaker makes chicken salad. You know the rest. He finds Kadarius Campbell for the touchdown out of the backfield. Whitaker on that opening drive went three for three with 33 yards and a touchdown. Went to three different receivers too. 
Stephen Newbold had one catch for four yards. Deontay Rarick had one catch for 16 yards. And Kadarius Campbell had a 13-yard touchdown catch. Head coach Irv Strobin discussing something with the officials. Judging by the reaction of defensive coordinator Marlon Loban after the play as well, there's something the Bandits coaching staff saw that they didn't like, that they felt should have had a flag thrown on it. I think Strobin's just trying to get an explanation on why there wasn't. Can't go back two plays ago and take that off the board now, no matter how you cut it. So it'll remain 6 nothing. Crow to kick off here for Colorado. We'll see who Sioux City sends back out there to return. Fred Bruno, it looks like Landon Freeman back there. Freeman back deep to return. Crow still teeing it up. Talked about Landon Freeman in the pregame a little bit. Just signed last week, I believe last Thursday, ahead of the game on Saturday for these Bandits. Played some college ball at the University of Sioux Falls. Two seasons there. Was a kick returner for them. See what he can do at the Arena League level. And everybody knows what Bruno can do if you're a fan of the Arena game. And that kick is going to be fielded by Bruno. At the goal line, cutting left side, has a gap. Now getting out to the sideline. There he goes, Fred Bruno down the sideline. He's in there for the touchdown. Unless they say he was pushed out just short. No, they don't. What can Bruno do for you? He always delivers for the Bandits. And immediately, it's 6-6 six to six on the kick return for a touchdown. Fred Bruno, the franchise himself, ties us up pending this extra point. Braden Mines comes in to kick. Talked about him earlier, described as a Swiss Army knife for this Bandits team. He also handles the kicking duties. He's lined up at running back, wide receiver, fullback. He's played emergency quarterback, linebacker. He's been a defensive lineman, and uh, he probably drives the bus. Snap is good, hold is down, and that kicks wide to the left, though. Don't know if it got kick, hit off of somebody or if just swung too far to the left on Mines. We're going to stay tied up at six apiece, though, with 10.26 to go in the first quarter of play. Got immediate timeout on the field, so the clock will stop at 10.26. Going to have to wait a little longer for the opening drive for these Sioux City Bandits on offense. But Colorado, after a very good opening drive on their end, ending in six points, clinical drive from quarterback Jason Whitaker, three for three for 33 yards and a touchdown. I think the Spartans' offense is going to be too upset about getting a chance to get back out there on the field. We have some fan engagement here during this media timeout. Got some pedal car races right now. Both of them got some sick flame decals. Little help from those involved. So trouble on the turn. Black car got down to the five yard line first. Uh, the white car able to get back and get going faster and they are going to win this one. The pedal car races here in Sioux City. There's always some great fan engagement here in Sioux City. You get little young fans involved. That's why it's a Great opportunity to get down here and have a fun night for the Sioux City Bandits. Only two more regular season home games after this one. Bandits got a couple road trips coming up. Just keep an eye on that. If you want to get down here for a Bandits football game, May 18th will be your next chance. We'll talk about that more later on. That one's going to be a big game as the rival Omaha Beef come up by 29. 10.26 to go in quarter number one after a... Darn near perfect opening drive from Colorado. Fred Bruno answers with a kick return for six. We'll see if Colorado can answer here. A second return, kick return touchdown of the season for Fred Bruno as well. Mines marching off his steps. Newbold and Hayes back deep to return for the Spartans. Mines 
boots it up high away, end over end kick. That is going to hit between the uprights. That is the first deuce of the season for Braden Mainz, and he is ecstatic about it. Big play there for Braden Mainz, bringing the big leg with him. One point to the Bandits. He gets that extra point back that he missed earlier. No, I get here early enough, I can see both teams warming up. Braden Mainz was practicing that when I got into the building. Just, he never hit one while warming up, which I think is why his reaction was so, it, it, was so ecstatic right there. He hit the crossbar once, the underside of the uprights, just once. Whitaker takes the snap, out right side, quick pass, fired, caught near the 10 yard line. That'll be first, or that'll be second down and five from the 10 now, after a gain of five on first. Whitaker starting this game four for four now. Carlton Watkins gonna be credited with the tackle. Couple men go in motion. Campbell, the running back next to Whitaker, takes the snap, fires left side, and that one is going to go up over the boards and out of play. And a Spartans player, that's Newbold, actually ends up in the Sioux City bench. He was caught by Aaron Roundtree, who's inactive tonight. Brings up third and five. I was going to say, they put the second point on the board. The deuce ruling is two. The referee initially said one, so there's a little confusion there. It's the first time I've seen it happen here, too, for the Sioux City Bandits. But it's eight to six is your score off the deuce. Whitaker in the shotgun, Campbell on his right. Hayes and Newbold gonna go in motion. Whitaker takes the snap, chest high, a little to the left. He's got some time, now he's under pressure from Blash, up over the middle, tipped up in the air, deflected away by Asi Tapua. The Bandits there dropping two of their defensive linemen and Devin Gronhagen and Asi Tapua in coverage. Randall Blash still almost got there, the lone guy rushing the passer. And to Asi Tapuo with a big pass deflection makes it fourth and five from deep in their own territory for Colorado. What are they going to do? Big man Tapua showing the athleticism there. They're going to go for it here. Whitaker in the shotgun. Same formation we just saw with Newbold and Hayes in motion. Campbell on the right side of his quarterback in the backfield. Fourth and five, Whitaker takes the snap. No pass rush here, got a man open deep down the field, Steven Newbold, and that's how you turn it into something positive for Colorado. 40 yards down the field, Steven Newbold for six, puts the Spartans back on top. We're gonna have ourselves a high scoring game at this rate. 12 to eight already pending the extra point. We got 20 points in this ball game already. The Sioux City offense hasn't even taken the field. Twelve to eight. After the crowd is silenced here in Sioux City, they were on their feet on that before that fourth and five. Jason Whitaker showing that we have to put him in the conversation for one of the best quarterbacks in arena football right now. I formation here. Jeff Luke, the defensive lineman, is a fullback. They're going to pitch it out to Campbell right side. Try to get in there for the two point conversion, and they do. So Campbell gets in there for two. The old power sweep off the right side. And the officials are, have now corrected it over the loudspeakers as well. The deuce earlier to Mainz was credited as two points, so it's now 14 to eight. That is your score line. 22 points on the board in this contest. We still haven't seen any Sioux City offensive players take the field and line up for a snap. Had an opening drive touchdown for Whitaker. Finding his running back, Kadarius Campbell out of the backfield. And then immediately was answered by a Fred Bruno kick return for six, and then that 40-yard bomb from Whitaker to Steven Newbolt. 
Whitaker now at five for seven for 78 yards and two touchdowns through the air. Air raid attack for Colorado, could put up points quick, fast, and in a hurry. Let's see what Sioux City has to answer for here. 6.27 to go in quarter number one. Crow to kick. It's Freeman and Bruno back again to return. See if Darian Crow kicks it away from Fred Bruno here. Tell you right now, I would. Crow boots it away. That one's drifting towards Landon Freeman. He receives it just a yard inside of his own end zone. He's cutting out left side as well, trying to find some blockers. Gets away from one tackle, pushed up along the boards. There's going to be a flag anyway. I think we're going to get a holding on the kick return. And more flags after the play for some pushing and shoving extracurriculars. I think every referee on the field has thrown a flag at some point or another on that play. A little bit of house cleaning to figure out who all is getting penalized. Those penalty flags are brought to you by Flanzone. Referees still conferring here, 6.17 to go. We'll get our first look at Josh Hollins in this Sioux City offense. So they're going to march off half the distance to the goal for the penalty against Sioux City. Which is an illegal hands to the face on the receiving team. And then they're going to add 15 yards back for the post play penalty for the unnecessary roughness against Colorado. After all is said and done and we move back and forth, Sioux City's going to start with the ball at the Colorado 24 yard line. See what the Bandits have in store here. Bruno and Shepard going to be the receivers in motion. Getting the ball moved to the middle of the field. Now ready to go. Play clock starts. So does the game clock. Hollins under center for Haska, the deep back. Bruno and Shepard go in motion. Hollins, handoff left side for Haska. Starts to slip down, able to get back to his feet, push forward for a couple more yards. But good defense there by the Spartans. Swarming to the ball. Gain of only a couple, about two or three. I'd say gain of three brings up second and seven from the 21. Holland's going to go empty set here. Shepard and Prohaska going to be there in motion. Hollins from the gun, takes the snap, left, right side, fires quick to Brandon Shepard. Caught near the line to gain. They're going to say he's pushed back just short of it. Third and short here coming up for the Bandits from the 14-yard line. Brandon Shepard known as a deep threat for the Sioux City Bandits team. He takes off, looks like he's running down the field as fast as he can. Comes around and comes to a stop. He'll hitch her out just near the sticks. Now the huddle's broken here. There's a little bit of a break in the action. Three linemen for Sioux City today. I haven't mentioned them yet. Sterling Clark, Rashad Mungro, and Omar Roberts. Bruno and Shepard in motion. Handoff left side for Haska. Stutter steps, gets enough for the line to gain, and a few more. Still pushing the legs. Now the whistle blows. Everybody breaks apart evenly. It's going to be a new set of downs. Not much, but it's enough for Drew Prohaska and the Bandits offense. First and 10 from the 12. 422 and counting to go in this first quarter of play here. Sioux City trails Colorado 14 to 8. Which what has been an action-packed opening quarter. 
Jason Whitaker drove the Spartans down the field on the first drive of the game, finishing that one three for three with 33 yards and a touchdown. And then followed that up with a kick return touchdown by Fred Bruno and then a 40-yard bomb from Whitaker to Newbold for another touchdown for Colorado. That's why to deuce in there. Hollins, read option, almost loses his footing, gets away from a couple tackles, still trying to turn the legs. He's inside the five. The Bandits are in the red zone. It's going to be just a yard short of the line to gain. Josh Hollins lost his footing a couple times. The turf monster almost brought him down, but eventually the Spartans able to get to him. That looks like number six, Amari Silla. Second and short here from the red zone, about the three yard line. Gonna back the stick up just a bit. One yard to go for the first down, about three yards to go for the touchdown. Hollins in the shotgun, Prohaska on his right. Bruno and Shepard gonna be the men in motion. Bruno wraps around. Hollins looks quick left side. Sammy Epps caught on the screen pass. He's into the end zone for six. They scored on that last week. They score again here. Sammy Epps putting the Bandits back tied at 14, pending this extra point. Start looking for that Sammy Epps play near the goal line. That's three catches on the season for him. Two of them have been from three or four yards out from the end zone and ended in six on those screen passes. Fred Bruno to hold here. Braden Mines to kick. Snap is good. Hold is down. Mines kick up, and that one's good. Puts the Bandits up 15-14 here in Sioux City. High-scoring affair early on, 2.27 to go in quarter number one. Got the touchdown t-shirt toss here inside the Tyson Event Center. Looks like we're going to get another fan engagement segment as well. Let's look at that drive for the Bandits. Josh Hollins went two for two with nine yards and a touchdown through the air. He was also the leading rusher with nine yards on that carry he had. Drew Prohaska had two carries for six yards. Brandon Shepard and Sammy Epps caught the two passes. Shepard, a six-yard gain, and Epps, a three-yard gain and a touchdown. Look at the defensive stats on that drive for the Spartans. It was the first time they were on the field. Jay Hall had two tackles. Amari Silla had two more. And Demario Hayes, Demario Mays, excuse me, had another. Defensive stats for the Bandits. Carlton Watkins is the leader right now with two tackles. Braden Mines, Devin Gronhagen, and Sherman Gilbert each have one tackle. Gronhagen's was for loss. Quarterback hit for Randall Blash and a pass breakup for Ossie Tapua. Includes your defensive stats. It's been a fun one so far in the, four, in the first quarter. 29 points already. We still got 2.27 to go in this first quarter. The way, and the way this Colorado offense has been rolling all year long, barring a turnover, they just know how to find a way to the end zone. back that deuce for Braden Mainz it's a one-point lead instead of a one-point deficit shows how important that rule is here in the National Arena League we haven't seen a lot of teams take advantage of it early on that's the first one for the Bandits this season if you're able to hit a deuce consistently it's a real difference maker especially on the scoreboard in these tight games Fifteen, fourteen, the score. Mines marching off his steps. New Bolden Hayes back deep to return for Colorado. The Spartans trying to make a statement here in week in year one for the organization. Get their first one. This one high end over end that was going to drift towards the back of the end zone. Not go off anything. It's going to be received by Hayes. Cuts it out left side. Gets away from a couple tacklers. It's pushed up along the boards. Finally, after crossing the midfield stripe, gets pushed out of bounds around the twenty. Good return there for Khalil Hayes. Kick returns and special teams have been crucial so far for both teams. Oh, they're gonna say he got pushed on the other side of 25. His initial contact with the boards came back at about his own 22 yard line. Third drive for Whitaker in this Colorado Spartans offense. Two for two so far on touchdowns. First drive went four plays, 30 yards and a touchdown. Second drive went four plays, 45 yards and a touchdown. 
First and 10 from the 22. Whitaker takes the snap, steps up in the pocket, fires left side, has Hayes there. He gets away from a defender and gets a first down and more. Breaks off the first tackle, now eventually brought down by Braden Mainz. It's going to be a new set of downs for Colorado. Knocking on the door of the red zone as well. First and 10 from about the 12-yard line. First and 10 from the 12 for the Spartans. Whitaker gets the play call. Coach Shaw is building something over in Colorado. You can't sleep on them. Down the stretch in the season, and even right now. Now there was a lot of consensus early on as Hayes goes in motion, fakes the jet sweep to him, hands off at the middle of Campbell. He's brought down at the five yard line. Spartans are gonna get into the red zone, but there was a lot of consensus early on in the season. Omaha coming off of their perfect year in the CIF last year as, as league champions. Carolina is a staple of the National Arena League. Sioux City as well as a historically consistent franchise. Those are the three teams many earmarked in the National Arena League as teams that could win it all. This Colorado team is an expansion unit. Nobody really knew what the word was on them coming in. They've proved they like to air the ball out and they're very effective on offense. Flag's gonna fly off the jet sweep to Khalil Hayes. He's brought down after a gain of a couple. This one might be moving back, but also could be moving forward. Usually means a potential illegal defense here against Sioux City. It's going to be an illegal defense against the Sioux City Bandits. Linebacker Braden Mainz within five yards of the line of scrimmage. And that's going to do it for the first quarter of play. 15 to 14, high scoring game so far. On pace for almost 100, for over 100 total points between these two teams. So we'll see if that keeps up that pace going on here into the second quarter. 15 to 14, Bandits lead by one, but the Spartans knocking on the door of taking that lead right back. Let's take a look at the stats for both teams through the first half, through the first quarter of play. We'll start with the Spartans. Jason Whitaker at quarterback into that first quarter, six for eight for 94 yards and two touchdowns, the long of 40. Steven Newbold. Two catches for 44 yards and a touchdown, that 40-yard bomb. Deontay Rarick had two catches for 21 yards. Hayes had one catch for 16 yards. That's Khalil Hayes. And Kadarius Campbell had one catch for 16 for 13 yards and a touchdown. Campbell also had two carries for five yards in that first half. His longest being an eight-yard gain, losing three yards on the other run. For Sioux City, not much. Only one drive on offense. Two for two through the air for Josh Hollins with nine yards and a touchdown. Also has nine yards on the ground. He's the leading rusher in that category. Brandon Shepard had one catch for six yards, and Sammy Epps had one catch for three yards and a touchdown. Defensively, Jay Hall and Amari Silla have the leading in, are tied for the leading tackles for Colorado with two. And Braden Mites and Sherman Gilbert, also tied for two, are the leaders for the Bandits. The age-old question that's never been answered. I wish the Baja men would tell me. Who let the dogs out? Who's to say? Laker takes the snap. A little high, but hands it off to Campbell. It's going to be blown up in the backfield. Asi Tapua was there first. Carlson Watkins was in there to help as well. Asi Tapua making his name known here early on in this one. That one a TFL. Second tackle for loss of the game for Sioux City. The first for Tapua. Goes from second and short to third and about three. Loss of a couple there on that run. And his defense needs to stiffen up here. Laker in the shotgun with Campbell on his left. Third and about three, Whitaker takes the snap, looks right side, now he's gonna just take off and try to go on a quarterback run to the left side, gets near the end zone, he's gonna get in there for six. Jason Whitaker 
showing that he's also the leader of the Colorado Spartans team for a reason. Using the legs to make the play there, puts Colorado back on top, 20 to 15 here in Sioux City, pending the extra point. Heads up play by Whitaker. Stepping up in the pocket, seeing the space, scrambling towards the sideline and getting the ball over for the touchdown. Crow to kick the extra point here. Crow's kick is up and good. Makes it a six point lead now for Colorado. Twenty-one fifteen. now the score with 13-28 to go in this first half of play. Every time one of these offenses has touched the ball so far, it's ended in six. We expect it to be an offensive showcase today. We knew how high, how high powered the Colorado offense was. They're showing it here. Bandits can do here when they get the ball back. Fred Bruno back to return along with Landon Freeman. Darian Crow to kick off again for Colorado. For the kickoff here, the Spartans are bunched up around Crow. A little bit different of a kickoff formation here. This is a high end over and kick going to be received short at the five yard line by Bruno. Trying to find some space down the left side. He's pushed up along the boards, out of play at the 25. Be first and 10 from about the midfield stripe for Sioux City. Looks like Bruno maybe just got across it, depending on where they place this ball. I'm just looking where they're putting the sticks out right now. No, just got to the midfield stripe. First and 10 from the 25 for Sioux City. Kick returns like that are crucial, especially in this game when you can literally cut the field in half. We give it an elite returner like Bruno. Hollins sends Bruno and Shepard to the line. Actually, jet sweep to Bruno, gets tackled in the backfield though. Heads up play there by the defensive lineman. That's Samuel Hammond. Had four tackles on the year coming in out of the University of Nevada. Has a big one there, stops Bruno in the backfield. Lost for about two, so makes a second and 12. Second and 12 from the 23, maybe second and 11 from the 24. Holland's gonna go empty set. Sends Prohaska and Epps to the line. Hollins takes the snap. Looking left side, pressure up the middle. Holland's trying to get away. He's gonna be wrapped up and brought down. Gets back to the line of scrimmage, so I don't think they're gonna count that as a sack, but it should be for Corey Henry. He deserved it. Getting back in there and getting to the quarterback, Josh Hollins, providing some pressure from this Spartans defense. Something that we didn't see much of in the opening couple weeks of the season. Collins now behind the eight ball, third and 11 from his own 24. Pressure makes diamonds and the way Colorado's been playing, even down six, situation. High snap, Hollins gets it, swips it out, swing pass to Prohaska, gets past the original line of scrimmage and a few more yards before being brought down. Big hit laid on him by Colorado. Gonna be Fourth down, let's say about seven here. That gain of four or five on the play. Yeah, hot. Prohaska was stood up and then lit up. That was Javaris Thompson. Let's 
See what Hollins and the Bandits offense here has on fourth down. Empty set, Shepard and Prohaska in motion. Hollins takes the snap, blitzing up the middle. Fires quick left side, Fred Bruno's there. Is it enough? They're ruling it enough. It's gonna be first and 10 Bandits. Fred Bruno got to the sticks. He's got the sixth sense. He's been doing this for a long time. Got to the sticks, turn around, put it right on him from Josh Hollins. New set it down for the Bandits. Holland's gonna go under center here with Prohaska, the deep back. Shepard and Bruno in motion. Hand off right side of Prohaska, flag's gonna fly. Usually when they don't play the, when they blo don't blow the play dead, I should say. That is a flag on the defense, so I assume it's an illegal defensive call. We'll get the official ruling here. Those penalty flags are brought to you by Flans Electronics and the Flan Zone. Penalty will go against the defense. They called it a number 21. That would be Justin Castell out of Delaware State. Shotgun set here for now for Hollins. Three receivers all to the left, and they're going to stay that side as Hollins takes the snap. Looking left side quick. No, design quarterback run maybe. Trying to get a block from Shepard. He's hit hard along the boards. Josh Hollins putting his body on the line for a couple extra yards. Gets to second down and about two here after that gain of three. They're going to say second and one, so gain of four on that run. They're inside the red zone now, are the Bandits. These Bandit drives are a lot more deliberate than the Colorado drives have been. When you're a high-powered passing offense, it's hard not to get those yards quick and fast. After this drive, we'll take a look at possession time for both teams. Hollins, a little pitch out to Prohaska. Left side jumps into the end zone for six. Drew Prohaska ties us back up at 21 apiece here in Sioux City. A little quick pitch off the left side gets him in for six, pending this extra point. The Bandits could retake the lead if Mainz is able to convert on this PAT. Shepard will be the snapper. Bruno to hold, Mainz to kick. Snap is good, hold is down. Mainz kick is up wide to the left. Will be tied up at 21 apiece. 8.25 to go in this first half of play. We're all tied up at 21. It's been a fun game so far, high scoring affair. Whichever defense can buckle down first might be the one that wins it. And the way it's going, it might only take one stop. Both these offenses have been having themselves a field day. Also special teams, a couple big kick returns from Fred Bruno have set the Bandits up well. And Khalil Hayes with a big kick return as well for Colorado earlier on. 21-21 the score. You want to say we look at time of possession. In my mind's playing tricks on me. It's felt like Sioux City's offense has been more deliberate. You have to take into effect that one of their scoring drives was just a kick return for touchdown, so it didn't count as any time of possession. But it's 11 minutes, 44 seconds right now for Colorado, 9-17 for the Bandits. here during a media timeout. Who's going to win the cart race? Always keeping the keeping the fans involved here in Sioux City. taking the field here in a 21-21 ball game. Colorado's been in these dog fights so far this year. Both their games come against two of the top teams in the league, ending in 12 points or fewer deficit. This one tied up at 21 with Sioux City. Mainz runs up, high kick end over end. Gonna be near the back of the end zone, received by Newbold. 
Trying to find space down the left side. All he's going to find is Zach Slugger. Slugger brings it down around the 12 yard line. Much better kick coverage there for the Bandits than on the last kick return for Colorado. But we've seen, no matter how far back you set up this Colorado offense, they can hit you over the top. 40 yard bomb from Whitaker to Newbold earlier on was one of the scores in this game for Colorado. Take a look at Jason Whitaker's stat line again as he comes back out on the field to lead his team. Six completions on eight attempts for 94 yards and two touchdowns. Also the leading receiver with five yards on, or leading rusher, excuse me, five yards on the ground for a touchdown there. So three total touchdowns already for Jason Whitaker. Whitaker, a little high snap, looks quick left side, finds Khalil Hayes. He's gonna be wrapped up by Sherman Gilbert. Braden Mines over there as well, but that's a game of about seven there on the play. I mark it closer to six. They're going to give him seven. Second and three now. Whitaker in the shotgun again. Campbell on his left. Two receivers in motion to the right. Whitaker's looking that way, going deep on the middle of the field. Newbold's there. So is Xavier Spann. How did Newbold haul that one in? Double coverage, two defenders were there for the Bandits, but neither of them could go up and get the ball from Steven Newbold. Great play by Newbold. I think the Bandits were arguing the ball was shifting as Newbold went to the turf. No move to take another look at it. Coach Loban's looking at the big screen here inside the Tyson Event Center, trying to get a clear look. Did look like that ball might have came out at the end there. Doesn't matter, run up the middle. Not gonna be enough, gain of a couple. Now you can't go back and review it. Actually, no, looking back at that replay. Saw it one more time. Might have just been the white glove of a bandits player that I saw down there, not the white of the ball. That was shifting around. Anyway, second and goal here for about the one yard line. Power run up the middle didn't work. They don't try it again. Whitaker fakes it and then scoots into the end zone for the quarterback run. Another rushing touchdown for Jason Whitaker. Puts him up 27-21. Spartans lead by six here in Sioux City. This Colorado offense has been on another level to start. Whitaker just snuck out the back door. They showed power. Crow on to kick here. 27-21 scoreline. Newbold to hold, Crow to kick. Snap is good, hold is down. Kick is up and off the left upright, no good. It'll remain a six-point ball game. 27-21 year score here inside the Tyson Event Center with 5.09 to go in this first half of play. Going back to that catch, what a snag by Steven Newbold. Between two defenders, able to go up, high point the ball, get into the bread basket and secure it with Sherman Gilbert and Xavier Spann all over him. It's one of the plays that you're gonna look back on here if Colorado is able, to get, is able to hand Sioux City their first loss of the season. That is going to be a play you're going to look back on and take. Team starting to retake the field here for the kickoff. Bruno and Freeman going to go back deep to return for Sioux City. Kick return game's been working well for the Bandits so far. Do have a touchdown off of it from Bruno. Been able to start in some pretty solid field position as well. Neither team able to pull away early in this one. Every time the Spartans get the lead, the Bandits answer. Every time the Bandits get the lead, the Spartans answer. Neither team letting the other out of their sight. First defensive stop might be all it takes. Crow checks with his man on the kickoff team. Starts his run up. He's going to boot this one end over end. Drifting towards Freeman. Oh, it's actually going to go to Bruno. 
Freeman caught himself off, lays a block, springs Bruno, open down the middle, cuts back to the right side, Fred Bruno, he's not gonna have enough space for a touchdown, but the franchise does it again on kick return. Pushed out near the 10 yard line, big block by Landon Freeman, you see it at the start of the play, Springs Bruno open, is able to cut back inside, get away from a couple of tackles, but before he's eventually pushed out of bounds by the kicker, Darian Crow. Good job by Crow on kick coverage, the last line of defense. You can say he's marked out about the 13 yard line. Every time it seems like one of these teams is gonna land that shot that puts the other against the ropes, they get counterpunched. Hollins play action, forced to scramble, he's not gonna get away. Big tackle there in the backfield, that's gonna be a sack for Colorado and Samuel Hammond. Sam Hammond getting his first sack of the season. Pins the Bandits back a little farther. Say a loss about four, I wanna say, maybe even five on that one. Can bring up second and 15. it has got to get to about the three yard line for a new set of downs. Hollins gonna go under center again, perhaps with the deep back, Shepard and Bruno will run in motion. Hollins gonna hand this one off this time off the right side, got some blockers for Drew Prohaska, he stood up hard by Javaris Thompson. He's able to get through him for a couple more. Thompson's helmet came off there as well at the end of the play. So about the 10 yard line by the end of it for Sioux City here. So now, it's gonna be third and about six from the 10. Holland's gonna go empty. Bruno and Epps gonna go in motion. Prohaska and Shepard are on the line of scrimmage. Fakes the jet sweep, does Hollins. Forced to roll out to his right, now trying to cut back left. Hollins finds Fred Bruno. Bruno goes to the ground to get it, gets back to his feet before he's tackled, stays on his feet. All that for a gain of one, if anything but it could have been a big loss on the play as Hollins was able to scramble away from a couple would-be sackers. Gonna bring up fourth down. That was third and seven, they're gonna call it fourth and six now. Colorado I think wants to talk this one over. There's a timeout for the Spartans. Coach Shaw wants to talk to his team. 27-21 year score here in Sioux City. Both these quarterbacks have had a solid start to the day so far. Whitaker's numbers have just been unreal. Eight for 10 for 128 yards and two touchdowns through the air. Compare that to Josh Hollins, who's been efficient at five for five, doesn't have the deep plays like Whitaker has. His longest pass has only been seven yards, but five for five for 22 yards and a touchdown. Efficient play so far from both quarterbacks. Whitaker has the more big plays. And right now, his team's leading 27 21 over Sioux City. Coming out of the timeout here inside the Tyson Event Center. Holland's gonna line up in a shotgun here with Prohaska on his left. Bruno and Shepard gonna go in motion. Holland sends them, Bruno wraps around. There's gonna be three receivers to the right now. Looks like they were gonna fake that screen pass. High point, the ball back corner of the end zone to Brandon Shepard knocked away, incomplete. A lot of hand fighting there. No flags fly, that's great defensive play there made by the Spartans. Didn't see the number initially, but good play there. That's Demario Mays, the defensive back out of West Alabama. That went 50-50 with Brandon Shepard and won, and that's the first defensive stop for either team. First offensive possession that doesn't end in points. Comes with 2.18 to go in the second quarter. Now 
Now Colorado has an opportunity to milk some clock, potentially go into the halftime break, up a couple scores. Just saw Braden Mines declare himself with the referee, so he's coming after the quarterback here. The Bandits are gonna send four. Whitaker sends his men to the line. Mines on the blitz, quick pass right side to Khalil Hayes. He's touched near the boards. They're gonna say he was pushed into the boards. Hayes still running, but the whistles have blown. Colorado fans don't like that one that made the trip. Colorado players aren't a fan of it either. What? Whistle calls it dead. There's a challenge flag on the field, but even if they do say, yeah, he didn't touch the wall, how much yardage they could give him back as the play was blown dead. I think the officials are going to talk to Coach Shaw here. Wait for everything to get taken care of. 1.31 to go in the second quarter of play. Still having a conversation with the officials as Coach Shaw for, Spart for the Colorado Spartans. Now we're going to break everything away. Second down, about three or I'll say three. Line of game is about the 19, just past the 15 yard line is where the ball is spotted. It's going down right now here in Sioux City, 27 21. It's been a dog fight so far. Baker sends his men to the line, takes the snap, looking quick left side, fires, has a man near the line to gain, trying to cut it back inside, gets some blockers going sideline to sideline, spins off another tackle, still going here, gets past the 20 yard line to about the 17. Big play there, he was initially first touched behind the line to gain, ends up getting past his own 19 yard line all the way to the band at 17. That is a big play there for Deontay Rarick. Brings up first and 10 here for Colorado. We are at the one minute warning here in the second quarter of play. It'll be normal football timing rules for the remainder of this quarter. 27, 21 year score. Colorado leads by six over the Sioux City Bandits. So we're getting down to brass tacks here in the first half. Both offenses have been clicking. Colorado's defense was the first to stand tall and stop the Bandits offense. Coach Strobin, defensive coordinator Marlon Loban, they want their defense to start standing tall here. I've not been able to stop this Spartans offense. And Whitaker, after three interceptions last week, has been clinical with the ball this week. 10 for 12, 152 yards and two touchdowns. That'd be a great stat line if the game was ending in 50 seconds. We're going to the halftime break in 50 seconds. Whitaker in an empty formation. Mainz declares as a pass rusher, so they're going to send four. Whitaker has to get it out quick, looking deep down the field. He has Newbold in the end zone. He's going to bring it in for another touchdown. Steven Newbold finds the sweet spot in the Bandits' defense. 33-21, the Spartans are now on top by even more. The first double-digit lead of the game for either team, pending the extra point. Bandit's defense just unable to crack the code that has been Jason Whitaker to Steven Newbold tonight.
Darian Crow on to kick the extra point. Newbold to hold. 33-21 score with 48 seconds to go in the first half. Hold is down, kick up, kick good. And we're going to get a penalty after the play as well as Tapua. Contacted Crow afterwards. Sent him hard to the turf. That's going to be a roughing the kicker call. Makes it 34-21 after the extra point's good. Waiting on the ruling here. It was a pretty clear roughing the kicker. It'll just be when it's enforced, I guess. Penalty will be assessed after the kickoff. 34-21, the band is down 13 here on their home turf. The Spartans came into this one. The offense has been stellar all year. But they came into this one averaging 33 and a half points per game. They've already surpassed that in the first half. Bandit's defense has just been put on the back foot all night long by this passing attack. Jason Whitaker, 11 for 13, 169 yards and three touchdowns already in the first half. Still plenty of time here left in the half. Bandits do get the ball to start the second half. Could try to go two for one. Crow. Over end kick, drifting towards Freeman. He's going to receive it in his own end zone. Freeman gets some blocks down the left side, finds an opening. He's got a lot of space. Only Darian Crow to beat. He tiptoes the sideline. That's another kick return for a touchdown. Landon Freeman, welcome officially to the Sioux City Band. It's his second game on the roster. House calls that one, makes it 34 27, pending the extra point. The only question I have. How do we assess that penalty? <laughs> Will it be assessed on the next kickoff? Do we just forget about it? What is the ruling? <laughs> just back and forth action. Every team has an answer for the other. Might get assessed on the extra point, I believe, actually. Two powerhouse offenses and special teams going shot for shot with each other. Referees are still conferring. So they will move back for the field goal try. That's how it will be assessed. Landon Freeman, the University of Sioux Falls product. Just working that left sideline. Stays in bounds and gets all the way for six. Great blocking on the kick return as well. It's going to be a long PAT attempt here. The Bandits trail by seven. It's from their own about 17-yard line. Also going to be set at about the 23. It's going to be a long kick over 30 yards for Mites. It's a narrow upright, too. More narrow than you see on Sundays. High snap, but Bruno gets it down. Mites with the kick up, and kick is dead center. Never in doubt. Makes it a six-point game, 34-28. Still got 41 seconds to go in this first half. Nobody go to the bathroom. Wait until halftime officially. Do not leave. These two offenses, these two teams are going back and forth. We could, ski, we could see two or three more touchdowns by the time we get to the halftime break. That's how high scoring this has been so far. 34-28, 41 seconds to go in the first half of play. Forty 
21 seconds to go in the first half. Just got some good news from ESPN. Tiger Woods made the cut at the Masters. This is the one weekend a year that I actually fully pay attention to golf. Just nice to see Tiger still in the hunt. 41 seconds to go in the first half of play. 34-26 your score. Spartans lead the Bandits. But two kick return touchdowns in this first half of play. The special teams have been working for Sioux City. Don't forget that deuce earlier on from Braden Mines as well. That's the reason it's not 34-26 right now. Mines to kick. He showed he's got the leg for it. If he goes for deuce again, could make it a four-point game. Now scoring can get really interesting in the NAL. New bullet back deep to return. Every time he's touched the ball, it feels like it's turned into gold tonight. Khalil Hayes back there as well for Colorado. Mainz checks with his men, starts his run up. End over end, high kick, drifting towards the sideline. It's gonna hit off the netting and be playable. Khalil Hayes brings out of his own end zone and he's gonna be brought down at the five yard line. He flips forward for another yard or two. But Mainz able to put it off the netting, allowed his team plenty of time to get back down the field and cover the kick. Braden Mainz talked about how good he is in all aspects of the game. He's been crucial on special teams today between the deuce and that one right there. But we've seen all night long. Doesn't really matter where Colorado starts on offense. Every possession's ended in the end zone. Steven Newbold, the leading receiver right now. Four catches for 88 yards and two touchdowns today for Colorado. See if he can add some more to it. Whitaker looking around. He's going to scramble out left side, fire back across the middle. Khalil Hayes is there. Antonio Pierce trying to rip the ball away. Hayes is going to be brought down. They're going to give him forward progress to a new set of downs. About the 17-yard line. Antonio Pierce was the one that brought him down. Pierce was trying to rip that ball away. Clock's running. 24 seconds and counting to go in the second quarter. Whitaker sends his men in line. Takes a snap, looking quick left side. Khalil Hayes is there along the boards, out of bounds. Clock will stop at 17 seconds. Hayes does gain a little more than halfway to the new set of line down. Second in about a long four or a short five, depending on who you ask. Seventeen seconds to go. Plenty of time here for Colorado. Whitaker, sensational in this first half, almost has 200 yards passing already. Sends his man to the line, he takes the snap, chest high, looking over the middle now, back left side. He's got some pressure coming from Gronhagen. He's trying to get away. Braden Mainz hits him along the boards. That's going to be a sack in the backfield. Makes it 11 seconds now remaining in the second quarter of play. That brings up third down. Third down coming. Third and about eight. 11 seconds to go in the first half. Bandits fans on their feet. Trying to will their team to their first defensive stop of the game. Colorado has scored every time that Jason Whitaker in this offense has touched the football. Trying to change that here. Lost about four yards on that sack. Whitaker sends his men to the line. Takes the snap, chest high. Looking right side, firing deep down the field. It's going to be a 50-50 ball. Who's going to come down with it? Nobody. It's going to be knocked into the stands. Great defensive effort by Antonio Pierce. He's locked in. So is this Bandit's defense. Fourth and long now for Colorado. Potentially the last play of the half coming up. With only five seconds remaining. Got to assume this is going to be one of those scenarios. Let's launch it to the end zone and see what happens. Whitaker's got a good arm. The ball can be live off the rebound net. So you got to keep that in mind too. Remaining in this second quarter of play. Maybe Coach Shaw reminding Whitaker of that down there. Send everybody down there. Launch it off the net. Try to get a rebound. Or if somebody gets open before they get there. Newbold's going to go in motion along with Khalil Hayes. Five seconds left in the second quarter. Time it. Timeout being taken by defensive coordinator Marlon Loban. Coach Lowe wants to talk to his team. 
the first time out of the half for Sioux City. With five seconds to go in the second quarter. For all intents and purposes, this is the last play of the second quarter, barring anything weird. Speaking of things that are a little weird, receiver Brandon Shepard just strapped up. He's coming out here to play defense. Shepard, one of the best 50-50 catchers in the league right now. It makes sense to put him out there to try to be a 50-50 defender. Most likely gonna just go back to the end zone and play center fielder. Getting loud here in Sioux City. Fourth down, doesn't matter the yardage. This is the last play of the half. They're gonna send every receiver to the right side of the formation for Whitaker and the Spartans. Whitaker takes the snap, three players coming after him. Time out taken. Sioux City taking another timeout. Coach Lowe saw something he didn't like there. Keep teasing us here with this final play of the half. It has been a beautiful game so far if you like points. If you're an old school defensive minded player or fan, I have a lot of apologies to say to you in this one. This has not been your kind of game, 34-28. Almost at the half. More points could still be in play. And the Bandits are dropping off back. Shepard gonna play center fielder again, it looks like. Xavier Spann, Carlton Watkins, and Antonio Pierce, the other defensive backs. Four receivers all to the right of the formation. And we're gonna call our third time out here. Coach Loban was just calling for Fred Bruno. We're gonna put more receivers out there for Sioux City. Fred Bruno maybe giving up a little bit of height compared to Antonio Pierce who he's stepping in for. Five foot eight for Bruno. Still a great athlete. Has great body control in the air as well. He's good, just has a great sense of timing too. He knows how to get up and get after it. They're gonna put four defensive backs back. Well, two defensive backs and two receivers depending on how you look at it. It's gonna be Watkins, Span, Shepard and Bruno back deep. Three down linemen, Ossie Tapua, Randall Blash, Devin Gronhagen, and Braden Mines gonna be the linebacker. We'll see if they play him in more of a middle zone as Mines to try to stop something from coming underneath. Or if they're gonna send him after the quarterback, Whitaker, and cause some havoc. Coach Loban getting the fans hyped up. He wants to see his defense make a big play here to end half number one. Five seconds still on the board in the second quarter, 34-28. And now Colorado's calling a timeout. Could this be a little gamesmanship from Coach Shaw? You want to use all three of your timeouts? I want more time to talk to my guys. Could also be uh, looking at a change, seeing Fred Bruno check in. Bandits still ready to go, same formation. Colorado breaks the huddle. Coach Loban trying to hype to the crowd. Play clock is running, Mainz is declaring, so they are gonna send him after the quarterback, Whitaker. Four receivers to the right, Whitaker, high snap, got some pressure from Tapua, forced to roll out to his white, no, 
Mines drop back, high ball. Who's gonna come down with it? High point in the end zone, knocked away. Carlton Watkins and Xavier Spann were there. I think Watkins is the one who knocked it to the turf. And that is how we end the first half of play. I'm out of breath after the first half. We still have two more quarters of football after this halftime break. 34 to 28, offense is the name of the game. Both defenses did get one stop in that first half. Otherwise, it was all scoring every time either offense touched the ball and a couple special teams touchdowns as well from Fred Bruno on the kick returns and Landon Freeman, both for the Bandits. So we're gonna get a little presentation here at halftime when this is when this concludes, we will come back, look at your first half stats, and take a look ahead to half number two. This is National Arena League football for the Sioux City Bandits. Thank you for joining us this evening for what has been a spectacular game so far.
Currently under halftime here in Sioux City, Iowa. Colorado Spartans leading the Sioux City band is 34 to 28. It's just at the half, 34 to 28. Both teams have been scoring a lot of points. Two kick return touchdowns for Sioux City and all but one drive on offense for Colorado has ended in six. That would be the last drive of the first half as well. Sioux City gets the ball to start the second half, so they come out and score right away. We could be right back tied or Sioux City retaking the lead potentially depending on the extra point uh, situation. What did we learn in the first half of play? Uh, defense is optional, I guess, tonight. Jason Whitaker is hot take, good at football. <laughs> very, very good at football. Jason Whitaker, quarterback for the Spartans, through the first half. I talked about it earlier. If you ended the game with these stats, that's a great week to put you in line for a potential offensive player of the week. Uh, nod, 13 for 17, 186 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions. He's also got two rushing touchdowns, does Whitaker. His leading receiver has been Steven Newbold. Four catches for 88 yards and two touchdowns. Khalil Hayes has the most catches on the team, five catches for 47 yards. Kadarius Campbell has a 13-yard touchdown catch. And Deontay Rarick has three catches for 38 yards. Steven Newbold right now is averaging 22 yards per catch. On average, he is getting, he cuts the field in half on average for this Colorado Spartans team. He is a big play threat every time he's touched the ball. Joshua Hollins, he's been efficient for Sioux City, but doesn't have the same big plays as Whitaker. A, little, a lot more short passing, a lot more run-oriented offense for Sioux City. Five for six for Hollins for 22 yards and a touchdown. Drew Prohaska, the leading rusher, four carries for 17 yards and a touchdown as well. Fred Bruno, the leading receiver, two catches for eight yards. One receiving touchdown in this game goes to Sammy Epps. Three-yard little screen route near the goal line. Another thing factoring into the fact that Hollins and the Sioux City office doesn't have a lot of yardage, the kick return game for Sioux City. Fred Bruno has three kick returns for 111 yards, one of them for six. Landon Freeman has two kick returns for 79 yards, one of them all the way back for six. Bruno's averaging 37 yards per return. Freeman's averaging 39 and a half yards per return. The Bandits are starting in key field position every time they get the football, it feels, because the kick return game between Fred Bruno and Landon Freeman has been that dominant. Freeman's kick return was from 56 yards. He was deep in his own end zone. Bruno's kick return for a touchdown was 50 yards. He received it at his own goal line. Freeman and Bruno have been giving the Bandits consistent field position in Colorado territory, starting on the other side of the midfield stripe. It's going to cut down on your yards on offense, but it's also going to make it a lot easier to be efficient and score on offense when you're that close. You don't have to drive the length of the field. That's not taking anything away from the special teams of Colorado either. Khalil Hayes has two kick returns for 36 yards, including a long of 26. He got to the other side of the midfield stripe. And Steven Newbold has a kick return for 18 yards as well. The kick return game has been good for both teams. But Sioux City has had the advantage in that one. And that has been two of their scores. Trailing 34 to 28 in this one. Just overall offensive possessions as well have gone in the way of Colorado. Not many possessions, already cutting out two possessions for Sioux City just because of those kick returns for touchdowns. Let's go over each possession of that first half. It started with a touchdown for Colorado. Four plays, 30 yards, three minutes off the game clock. They were responded to by Sioux City with a five play, 39 yard touchdown drive. Immediately right back following that, Colorado back on the board. A four play, 45 yard touchdown drive capped off with a touchdown pass. And then it was a kick return for a touchdown for Sioux City. And then it was a touchdown to end the first quarter for Colorado. In the second quarter play, a touchdown on the ensuing drive for Sioux City. Again, six plays, 25 yards. Colorado, another touchdown on their next drive, four plays for 37 yards. And a turnover on downs. The first defensive stop of the game came with 2.18 to go in the second quarter for Sioux City. As they were stopped after four plays for only four yards. And Estrano with a touchdown for Colorado to put them up at that point. 34 to 21. And then a touchdown response for Sioux City. And then end of dry, end of half. Last second heave to the end zone on fourth down. Did not come up roses for Colorado. And that ended the ball game. Er, that ended the first half. 34 to 28.
Looking ahead to the second half of play here, what do both these teams need to do? First of all, a defense needs to make a stop. That's number one. Defenses, one of these defenses is going to have to knuckle down on the second half, and that is going to be the difference that ends up in this one. Number two, you gotta basically just keep doing what you're doing on offense. The, the Bandits formula right now is not sustainable. They can't keep the kick returns for touchdowns. Two kick returns in the first half for touchdown. Coach Shaw of the Colorado Spartans, he's going to draw some up. They're going to try to take that away, and it's going to be more difficult in the second half. But you can keep getting those good returns in offensive field position, and now you got to make that make things happen on offense. Josh Hollins was very good last week, over 100 yards passing, 8 for 11 and 4 touchdowns. Hasn't had the ball as much in this game so far. They do have faith in their quarterback, Hollins, if the Bandits are on offense more in half number two. Defensively, Coach Loban probably raking his brain right now, trying to find a an answer in the secondary because Jason Whitaker has diced this Bandits defense. Talked about his stats already. Just keep going over. He's 13 for 17 for 186 yards in the first half. In, indoor, in, in the National Arena League with continuous clock and a shortened field and not as many possessions guaranteed. 186 yards and three touchdowns in the first half. There are quarterbacks who have great games that don't get that in a game. He's also got six yards on the ground for two carries. And that's a big thing for Colorado. They don't run the ball much. They have a total of six carries for 11 yards, but they do have two rushing touchdowns, both of them from Jason Whitaker. The Bandits are going to have to force Colorado to be, I said a key for Colorado in the pregame was to be, be multidimensional. Don't just rely on the pass. I'm switching my script. Key for the Bandits in the second half is to make Colorado multidimensional. The passing game is so strong for Colorado right now that they're able to do anything they want, it feels. Sioux City is going to have to find a way to stop that passing attack and force Colorado to run the football more. The Sioux City has been good defending the run. They got a couple TFLs in that first half and a sack as well. So this Colorado offense, man, there's, there's no answers. Omaha and Carolina had enough of a formula to get some wins over Colorado. We are figuring out exactly who the Spartans are, and the Spartans are a good football team. Any given weekend in the NAL, they can keep, sneak up and get your favorite team. If you didn't know, now you know for Colorado. Looking back at last week's stat line in Colorado's loss in that one. I was on the road to Carolina by nine, 44 to 35. Whitaker had a great game there, five touchdown passes, 237 yards. But the key thing in that week was Carolina's defense was able to force turnovers. Three interceptions last week for the Cobras. Guarantee Coach Negron is happy about that one out east. I don't know if it's turnovers, it's just getting the different defensive concepts, trying to cover these routes. Colorado's passing game has been so effective and so efficient. You can't just sit back and hope for a mistake because it looks like tonight Whitaker's not going to make one. You're going to have to force a mistake if you're Sioux City. Just under two minutes to go. Both teams have retaken the field. The band is working their way on the field. The Spartans are out on the field. We go for this second half of play. 34-28. It's been a ridiculous ball game so far. Colorado has already surpassed their average points per game. They came in scoring 33 and a half points per game. They're at 34. Sioux City close to theirs. They're averaging 39 and a half points per game. They're already at 28. You play the law of averages, this game is on pace to end 68 to 56. I'll see if these defenses knuckle down and that's not the case. That was one of the most high scoring first halves I've been on the broadcast for here for Sioux City Bandits football. That is for sure. It's right up there with some of the craziest moments in general. Right up there with two years ago against Omaha for Sioux City where the two teams combined for three touchdowns in the last 24 seconds of regulation. Sioux City would end up winning that one in a back and forth affair. Do we have another magical barn burner here? Sioux City trying to stay atop the league right now. They're tied with Omaha for the top of the NAL at 2-0. Colorado trying to get out of the doghouse. Show a little break away from the bottom of the pack right now. I think they've proved on this field and they have for the last couple weeks. 
just because they were tied for last does not mean they belong there. It's a very, very good Colorado Spartans team, and they're putting it on full display tonight under the lights here on Friday. Blocks at zero. We're ready to go here for the second half of play. We're just waiting for both teams to take the field, get the kickoff going. Every time I look down to my left, I see a young fan in a banana suit. I wonder where, where does one acquire a banana suit? Is there a banana suit store at the mall or do I gotta go online? I'm not putting that, not putting that in my browser. Anyway, we're getting ready to go in the second half of play. Easily distracted sometimes, my apologies. Colorado to kick off, back deep to return is Landon Freeman and Fred Bruno. I said earlier on, you should kick it away from Bruno after his opening kick return. His first kick return touchdown of this one, second of the season. And then they did kick it to Landon Freeman, and Landon Freeman brought one back for a house call at the end of the first half as well. If you can get it there, try to kick it out of the back of the end zone off the netting, give your team time to get down there. If you can't, it might be best just to squib it and bounce it, make it hard to cover in the first place. We'll see exactly what they go with here as Darian Crow is ready to kick off. Crew. Crow boots this one away, high end over and kick Bruno to return. He catches it about the three yard line, looking for blockers, trying to go off the left side. Bounces off a tackler, Fred Bruno cuts it back to the right side, gets past Darian Crow. Fred Bruno not gonna do it again, but he almost does. Gets to the 10 yard line. The Bandits are gonna start in the red zone, thanks to Fred Bruno. Just put the statue up, put it outside the building. The franchise does it again, gets to the 10 yard line, first and 10 from the red zone for Sioux City. I got a sneaking suspicion that the Spartans are gonna work on kickoff coverage in the near future. The way Bruno and Freeman have been returning kicks today. Hollins under center, Prohaska the deep back. Hand off for Haskell, left side, cuts it back inside. He's going to be wrapped up by a couple tacklers and brought down, but not before a gain of four. Brings up second and six from the six-yard line in the red zone. Second and goal to go. See what the Bandits have here. Second and goal from the six. Collins in the huddle, we're under 20 seconds to go on the play clock, still plenty of time as they break it at 15. Prohaska is gonna be the running back in a shotgun formation for Hollins. Bruno and Shepard gonna go in motion. Bruno's gonna wrap around. Under five to go on the play clock as Hollins takes the snap, looking right side, dumps it out for Haska on the swing pass, puts the shoulder down, does not get to the end zone, but gets close. Third and goal from about the two yard line coming up. Prohaska just sneaks out of the backfield on those swing routes. And it looks like we're gonna get our power running back formation here. I see Devin Gronhagen check it in. So this formation, usually under center for Hollins, Gronhagen is a fullback, and then a split backfield of Mainz and Prohaska. You usually see this run off the right side, get to Prohaska, get some lead blockers. They do get him a lead blocker with Mainz diving, trying to reach the ball into the end zone. It broke the plane before the ball was knocked away, so it's going to be a touchdown for Drew Prohaska, but a couple flags are on the field, and there's also a player down for Sioux City. Rashad Mungro getting help back to his feet. It's a flan zone penalty flag brought to you by Flans Electronics. See what the call is on. They didn't blow the play dead, so that usually means illegal defense. They haven't put the score on the board. If it does count, it's 34-34. The referees are still conversing. Maybe they're just trying to figure out what they're doing this weekend. Still waiting on the official call. Here we go, we'll hear from the white hat. So 
So it's an illegal defense, but they're not going to rule anything on the penalty yet to review the play and check if Prohaska scored. If Prohaska scored, most likely Sioux City is going to just decline the penalty. If he didn't score, I believe it gives Sioux City a fresh set of downs instead of being fourth and goal from the one. They're also going to check maybe he fumbled it before the ball before the ball broke the plane which if he did that fumble will still be negated by the penalty that ball was out their original ruling on the field is Prohaska broke the plane of the goal line before it came out of his hands a lot of different things to take a look at here for the officials They have to walk by the Bandits bench to get back to the replay review area. So usually, I look down at the bench, I'm usually looking for Coach Loban, I'm not gonna lie to you, and see, judge his reaction as the officials are coming out. Because he will ask and they will tell him first most of the time. Watching it on the replay, perhaps off the right side, the ball is in his hands as he breaks the plane, and then as he goes to the ground is when it gets knocked out. See it in slow motion. So I believe this call is going to stand as it was on the field of a touchdown. The officials are back out on the field. We'll get their ruling. And that is what they call a touchdown. Drew Prohaska run up the middle just off the right side of his center gets a couple lead blockers from the power formation ties us back up 34 34. And a flag on the play as both teams were getting set. Now we'll wait on the ruling on this one as well. Substitution infraction against Sioux City. He's to a five yard penalty. Mines to kick the extra point here. He hit from 30 plus for an extra point earlier on. It was a little sharper than the other ones tonight. Colorado scrambling to get their guys in position to cover this kick. Snap is good, hold is down. Kick is up, kick is dead center. Braden Mines does it again, puts the bandits up by one, 35-34. High scoring ball game here in Sioux City. Touchdown t-shirt toss. toss after every touchdown. They're throwing t-shirts out here. T-shirt supply might get limited tonight the way they both these teams, these teams are scoring. 35-34. After a hard run by Drew Prohaska off the right side. Sneaks the ball across the line before he hits the ground and the ball comes out. That was cool to see. So one of the t-shirts ended up back on the field after some Bandit staff members were throwing it out. Newbold from Colorado picked it up, found a young fan in the stands and threw it to her and then they both celebrated like they won the Super Bowl. Things you love to see, even for the opposing teams, even though these fans aren't always cheering for you, coming out here and making sure they have a good time and enjoy themselves at the game, you gotta love to see it. Braden Mines to kick off from his own goal line here. The Bandits are out there ready to kick. Newble back deep to return along with Hayes. Checks with his men, they're ready to go. He starts his run up. High end over end boot. That one's drifting out of play, and that one's going to drop just out of play near the end zone. So it should start first and 10 at the 20 yard line for Colorado.
First and 10 from the 20. A young fan took that kickoff off the head. Hope he's okay. He looks okay. Good to see that the ref, I think, gave him the gave him the ball back. It did hit another hit a couple fans out there. Glad to know they're okay. Keep your head on a swivel sometimes here in the NAL. First and 10, Whitaker, he takes the snap in an empty set. Looking right side, finds someone over the middle. That's Rarick. He's getting near the line to gain. He's going to be swung around and brought down short of it. Coming up second and, nine, second and one after a gain of nine. They're actually going to give him to the line to gain after forward progress. So first and 10 from the 20-yard line now for the Spartans. Whitaker in the shotgun again. Running back on his left is Caldwell. Or Campbell, excuse me. Kadarius Campbell. A couple men go in motion. Whitaker takes the snap. Looking right side. Has a man. Rarick. He's one-on-one -on -one with Antonio Pierce, and he's going to get the interception. A flag flies on the play. Antonio Pierce with the pick. Let's see who the laundry is on, though as there was a lot of hand fighting between Antonio Pierce and Deontay Rarick, but if it stands for Sioux City, that is the pick they needed. Oh, they called it against the defense. They call a whole defensive holding against Antonio Pierce. Sioux City fans are not happy about that one. Antonio Pierce isn't either. Good play to high point the ball by Pierce. You can kind of see there the hand on the back of Rarick. Good bring up first and 10 from the 10 yard line. Colorado Spartans are in the red zone. Take that mistake off the board. Whitaker has plenty of time. Looking into the end zone, firing. That one's going to be a touchdown. No, the ball. The fans are saying the ball came out. If we believe the fans, they might be a little biased, though. We'll see what the referees say. No official ruling as Newbold went head over toes over the boards, ended up doing a handstand in the front row. The fan in the front row in a sweatshirt is swearing up and down it's incomplete. We have to take another look at that one, most likely. Ruling on the field is a touchdown. I just watched Newbold walk over, and that fan in the front row, who was vehemently believed when he <laughs> dropped the ball, went over and dapped him up afterwards as well. What a play from Newbold going up and over the boards. Head first into the stands. Forty to thirty-five is your score after a play that I'm still trying to fully comprehend from Stephen Newbolt. Nothing I could say would do it justice. Head first into the front row. Just plenty of time on that play for Whitaker too. On up and over the boards. Ends up landing head first. Just such a tough play. From one angle I've seen, it does look like the ball maybe comes out. It's hard to tell. You can't really confirm it. 
Or at least I can't looking at it. I just see a bit of the ball moving with no hands on it. See what the officials saw. They were reviewing it. As it stands at 40 to 35, pending this review. Call on the field is reversed. Tyler Lonstein, who started at quarterback last week, had to leave with an injury, is inactive this week, but he's here supporting his teammates. It, we heard his, I heard his opinion on it anyway. Said we love it. Even though it's not a catch. Still a great effort from Newbold. You got to give him credit for being willing to go up. Know he's going to go over the boards like that. Still try to make the catch. Looking at the replay again, you do see some movement. It's not the most clear thing. You can see what looks like the ball bounce back towards Newbold after he goes up and over. Empty set here for Whitaker. We got to get back to action. 9:22 and counting to go in the third quarter. It's back to 35-34 that right away they throw it out left side the offensive lineman declared as a receiver and he catches it for the touchdown that's Jeff Luke running off the left side you got to be ready for that as he declared eligible and Whitaker found him for six there's a touchdown unconventional touchdown to Luke forty to thirty five where we just were before that review good play design there for Colorado Catching the band, it's unexpected. It's a five point game, pending an extra point. We'll see if Colorado tries to go for two here. Can make it a six point game. He'd prefer to try to make it seven. Taking. Colorado got the timeout off, but the play clock was winding down there. Got the timeout off just in time. They're not going to be pushed back, and it gives Coach Shaw a little more time to talk to his team. See what Coach Shaw draws up here on this two-point conversion attempt. 40 to 35 with 8.22 to go in quarter number three. It's been a high-scoring contest so far. Colorado coming back out on the field here for the two-point conversion attempt. Power formation. Luke, who just caught that pass as an offensive lineman, is now the fullback. Deep back is you know, it doesn't matter, though. Fake the pitch to him, run off the right side. Whitaker had me fooled, too. I was watching the running back, Campbell, for a moment. But Whitaker able to get around the right side, get in there for the two-point conversion, pushes it back to a seven-point lead. 42-35, to 35, Colorado leads. The Sioux City Bandits here inside the Tyson Event Center. See if the Bandits can answer. It's been a, it's been a, all game long. Colorado scores and Sioux City answers. Has been the formula. Ever since Colorado drove down the first drive of the game and put six on the board, behind quarterback Jason Whitaker, he found Kadarius Campbell back on that one. As Campbell's still only catch of the game, one catch for 13 yards and a touchdown for him. Looking at Jason Whitaker's stats on the game so far, he's now 15 for 20 for 206 yards and four touchdowns. Two of those have gone to Steven Newbold. It was almost three over the boards. 
just showed it on the big screen. A couple of fans in the stands who are wearing Omaha beef gear. Always appreciate people coming up by 29 and watching some games in the NAL. Interesting wardrobe choice here in Sioux City, but you know, it is what it is. I know some members of the Bandits organization went down to Omaha a few weeks ago when the Bandits were on a bye week to take in a beef game. 42-35, your score with 8.19 to go in the third quarter of play. Both offenses scored on their opening drives of the second half. This one's gonna bounce at about the 10, end up in the arms of Freeman at the eight. Freeman's gonna cut to his left, trying to get away from a tackler, eventually, no, he does not get away. That's Quinton Peoples, who had the undershirt of Landon Freeman and just would not let go. Freeman looked like he shook off the initial tackle then was brought down from behind by a shirt. See what offensive coordinator Scott Jensen and quarterback Josh Hollins have up their sleeve here. They trail by seven. Hollins, six for seven for 26 yards and a touchdown. The last drive for the Bandits started at the 10 yard line of the Spartans. This is probably the worst field position they've started with all game long, backed up at their own 12. 13 yard line. Hollins, quick pitch out to Prohaska. Left side, gets the edge, gets pushed up along the boards. Gain of about eight on the play. Gets to the 20 yard line. They're going to give him seven on the play. 42 35, still the score. Hollins going to line up under center here. Prohaska, the deep back. Shepard and Bruno going to go in motion. Bruno wraps around for a jet sweep. It's going to just be a delayed fake for a handoff for Prohaska, who gets the first down and a couple more yards up to the 24-yard line. Prohaska. Little extracurriculars on the field. A couple different players involved. No flags flying. A couple players involved for both teams. Looks like it started with Silla and Shepard. Actually, I think it's two completely different incidences. No flags on either team after that one. Gonna make it first and 10 from the 24 yard line for the Bandits. Hollins under center. Prohaska the deep back. Fakes the handoff, does Hollins. Looking over the middle of the field, has Sammy Epps off the fingertips. It was a little wide for Epps, but we are, I think we're gonna get a roughing the passer there on Trey Threat. I brought my eyes back to the line of scrimmage. I actually called it against number 10, Hammond. I think they got the play call, the number wrong there. It was number 42. It's gonna give the Bandits even better field position. First and 10 from about the 13 yard line. Holland sends his men to the line, takes the snap, fakes the jet sweep to Bruno. He's going to keep it himself off the right side. He's got a lot of space. Josh Hollins, he's into the end zone. Josh Hollins and the Sioux City Bandits put six more on the board. Makes it 42-41. Josh Hollins leading this Bandits offense, not letting the Spartans pull away. One point game pending the extra point. Showing the footwork, Joshua Hollins. Mine's on to kick the extra point. He's been efficient so far today. Would make it 42-42. Low snap, little bobble, but able to get it up and through. 42-42, your score. We are tied up here in Sioux City with 5.05 to go in quarter number three. Still plenty of time to go. And they are 84 total points on the board. What a night it's been here at the Tyson Event Center. 42 to 42. 
These are legitimate video game numbers. I can't put up this many touchdowns in video games. 42 to 42 has been a great performance for both these teams. The Bandits, it's been multifaceted. It's been the running game. It's been the kick return game. It's been all passing for Colorado. Jason Whitaker, 15 for 20, 206 for four touchdowns through the air. He's got two more touchdowns on the ground, but only six yards. One of those touchdowns runs came from the goal line. We still got five minutes to play in the third. Mines to kick off. Hayes and Nubo go back deep to return. Mines tees it up. Now he's marching off his step. We're ready to kick it off here in Sioux City. 42 to 42, your score. The penalty playing a key factor on that drive for Sioux City. This one's a high end over end kick for Mines. Looks like he's aiming for the netting again, but it's going to be received deep in the end zone by Hayes. It's plenty of time for his kick recovery team to get down there, but Hayes is able to get away from a couple of them, get to the 17 yard line. Flag's going to fly at the end of it as well. I think the tackle was a little high. I think they're going to get Sioux City on a face mask. The Flan Zone penalty flag brought to you by Flans Electronics. Wait on the official ruling from the head official. There's going to be a face mask on number six. It's landed Freeman for Sioux City. Didn't talk about it earlier, but head official today is Randy Hagendorn. The umpire is Lance Bloger. The line judge is Greg Jennis. Also Ryan Freeze. And the back judge is Monty Tilgen. Your officials this evening, yeah, you can see it there on the replay, got up a little high around the face mask. Didn't hold it on to it for too long. Doesn't matter if he has an inch or a mile, though. Face mask to face mask. Shotgun formation here for Whitaker. Now they're set up at first and 10 from the Bandits 19-yard line. Campbell on his right. Takes the snap. Hand off to Campbell. This is one of the first positive runs he's had so far today, and he's still trucking. Gets about eight yards down the field. Bring up second and uh, gave him seven. So second and three. Good run there for Campbell. Kadarius Campbell. Sherman Gilbert was able to get in there on the tackle. I haven't given a lot of love to the defenses in this game. Sherman Gilbert currently leading the Bandits in tackles with six. He's followed by Braden Mines, who has five with a sack and a tackle for loss. Javaris Thompson and Justin Castell each have four tackles for Colorado, followed by Jay Hall and Amar. Whitaker sends his men to the line. One man wrapping around. Hand off to Campbell in the backfield. Ball's on the turf. It's going to be jumped back on top of, though, by Whitaker. Heads up play by the quarterback. Had his back to the ball. A sixth, a sixth sense feeling that the ball was on the turf. Turns back around, jumps on it. it it's cool. Almost got there, but that brings up third and eight after the loss of some yards on the fumble. Whitaker in the shotgun, Campbell on his left. New Bolden Hayes are going to go in motion. Sends him now, does Whitaker. Third and eight, looking fires, right side, picked off Xavier Spann. That's the interception they needed. He's down the left sideline, and he's pushed up along the boards. It'll bring up first and ten for the Sioux City Bandits. X-Man does it again in Sioux City. The former Morningside Mustang getting it done for the Bandits. 42 to 42, and that's the turnover Sioux City needed. Read that route like a Dr. Seuss book. And it's line up first and 10 now at about the 22 yard line of Colorado. Rare mistake from Jason Whitaker there.
Josh Hollins leading the troops out on the field. He's going to line up under center with Prohaska as the deep back. Bruno or Shepard's going to go in motion. Prohaska in motion as well. Hollins fakes the pitch out to him. He's looking for options. Has a man deep back in the end zone. It's Brandon Shepard a little too high. It's off the it's off of the netting, so it's live ball. It's going to hit the turf. It hit the side of the netting and bounced up almost. Was brought in by a Colorado defender. I think every team for a moment forgot that's a live ball. Under 150 to go here in the third quarter of play. Hollins line up for second and 10 for about the 22. Shotgun now, Prohaska on his left. Bruno and Shepard go in motion. Hollins, high snap, hands off to Prohaska. He's got a lot of blockers up the middle. Gains about five yards on the play. It'll bring up third and about four now, actually. Gain of six is what they're going to give him. No, third and five. Colorado player there for a moment was checking his ankle. Another Spartan had his helmet come off. It was Javaris Thompson who had his helmet come off. It was Hammond who was checking his ankle. Both of them still out there on the field. And Thompson is designating himself. So he's going to get after the quarterback here. Hollins in an empty set, third down. Hollins takes it. We got a free play here, lobbed up to Brandon Shepard. That one is brought in by Colorado, but it looks like it's going to be an illegal defensive penalty. That's why Hollins lobbed it up. A flan zone penalty flag brought to you by Flans Electronics. Waiting on the official ruling here. Land zone penalty flag. Flags have been different maker, difference makers in this one so far. So Javaris Thompson has called for the illegal defense. He did declare himself as a pass rusher, so he can blitz the quarterback, but he's not allowed to take off until the snap of the ball. And he took off just before the snap. That's what's going to cause the illegal defense and a fresh set of downs for the Bandits. Wipes the interception off the board as well. Big play for the Spartans' defense, but I don't think Hollins would have threw that ball if he didn't have a free play. Design quarterback right off the right side. Josh Hollins cuts outside with a stutter step, getting near the line to gain. He rips through a couple tacklers, and he's in. Joshua Hollins. Showing the muscle on the run. The quarterback gets into the end zone again and puts the Bandits on top for the first time in a while by more than just one point. 48 to 42. Sioux City leads by six as we got time winding down here in the third quarter of play. Mine's on to kick the extra point now. It's the end of the third quarter. They will do the try at this end since we're already set up. And that'll start the fourth quarter of play after that. Snap is down, kick is blocked. Mine's trying to get back on top of it. There will be no return either way as the play is blown dead. But a good kick block by Colorado. More exchanging of pleasantries down there on the field. The Bandits are going to come off the field, and we're going to go to the fourth quarter of play in a six-point ball game. What a play by Josh Hollins, ripping through tacklers on the, on the near side of the field for our cameras, far side from me. That's how we get to the fourth quarter of play, 48 to 42. Back and forth affair. Hollins has five carries for 37 yards and two touchdowns. Four rushing touchdowns in this game for Sioux City. 
Owens also has a touchdown pass through the air, six for eight for 26 yards there. He's been efficient, but it's just not the same as Whitaker's been able to push the ball down the field, but Hollins has been more with his legs. Shutting off one, two, three tacklers. Carried a couple more into the end zone. Had more defenders on him than Tommy Frazier in the Fiesta Bowl against the Gators. I know that's before my time, but I'm a Nebraska fan. I like to live back then. 48-42, your score. Josh Hollins has put the Bandits up six, 48-42 as Mines tees it up. A couple receivers back, a couple returners back deep to return. Looks like Newbold and Hayes again. They've been back there all day for Colorado. Mines did have a deuce earlier on. Is he gonna go for another one here? It would make it an eight point game if he's able to hit it. And he put a lot into this one, high end over end kick, but it's not gonna get to the netting. So he received by Hayes in his own end zone. He finds a hole at the middle. Brayden Mines though able to get the shoestring tackle. Decent return for Hayes, but he knows it could have been more if he's able to get around Mainz. First and 10 from their own 17 yard line for the Spartans here. Coming off of the first real mistake of the game with that interception last possession by Xavier Spann. Band is throwing a different look out there defensively. Jovan Woods checks in. Snap high. The blitzer looking left side. That one's behind the receiver, Hayes, but he somehow snagged. No, it hit the wall first. Good coverage on the play by Antonio Pierce. Yeah, off the boards before Hayes was able to snag it. Great effort by Hayes, though. You can't discredit that from him. Jovan Woods still out there. He joins Xavier Spann, Antonio Pierce, Sherman Gilbert, Carlton Watkins. And it's Gronhagen, Blash, and Asi Tapua on the defensive line. Empty set, Whitaker takes the snap. Forced to roll out to his left. Woods bearing down on him, lays a hit. Ball is up in the air and stands in there for the touchdown. Hayes, Khalil Hayes. What a play for Colorado. Whitaker took a massive hit on the play and delivered a perfect ball to the end zone. But bad news for Colorado fans. Whitaker is down back where he took that hit. I don't know if the Spartans players fully realize it yet. Medical staff now surrounding Jason Whitaker. This is not something anybody wants to see, whether you're a fan of the Bandits, the Spartans, or a fan of the game in general. Whitaker took a shot. It was clean. There was no flag thrown from Javon Woods. He's just trying to get a sack on the quarterback. It was a great throw from Whitaker, right where it needed to be with a guy in his face. Still checking on Whitaker here inside the Tyson Event Center. He's not gotten up. Forty-eight, forty-eight. your score, but the attention has been taken away from this high scoring ball game. Now to the health of Jason Whitaker as he's held back to his feet, and now to a sitting position at least. <laughs> Whitaker's gonna get helped off the field. Walking off under his own power. You gotta hope something like that is just the, <laughs> it sounds dumb, but you gotta hope something like that is just the wind getting knocked out of you. But he took a lick. We'll 
We'll see what this means for Colorado here. So they're going to go kick the extra point and make it 49-48 to give the Spartans a one-point lead. Looks like Whitaker, he's jogging, but he is going to go back to the locker room to get looked at. Crow to kick, Newbold to hold. High snap, gets it down though, almost blocked, and it is good for Crow. Makes it 49-48, the kicker Darian Crow puts the Spartans up one here in the fourth quarter of play. Jason Whitaker already coming out of the locker room. He just gave a thumbs up. He just gave a thumbs up to his team and coach. We might see Jason Whitaker when that offense comes back out on the field for Colorado. What a tough guy. He's a tough son of a gun. You got to give him that. He delivered a beautiful ball off that hit too. It was a clean hit from Jovan Woods. I want that to still be clear. Football is just a very physical game sometimes. Got 13 minutes to go in the fourth quarter of play. Sioux City is going to go back to return this kick. to kick off here again for Colorado. Do you see Jason Whitaker over on the bench talking to his head coach? It's good to see he's all right. Crew to kick off. Crow to kick off. High end over end kick, drifting towards Fred Bruno. They'll receive it about the two yard line. Looking for space, Bruno's got a couple kick returns that have been solid today. One of them for touchdown, that one to about the 22 yard line. It's going to be our first and 10 from their own 22 for Sioux City. Josh Hollins gets the play call from his offensive coordinator, Scott Jensen. Hollins using his legs last drive to get a touchdown for the Bandits. He's been very effective in the run game so far. Going to go empty set here for Hollins. Prohaska and Epps are going to be the receivers in motion. They have handed it off to Prohaska out of formations like this before. Not going to happen this time. Hollins takes the snap, looking over the middle. He's going to find Prohaska. No. And that defender, they're going to say, got there early. Just getting there a little early was Javaris Thompson. That is a Flan Zone penalty flag brought to you by Flans Electronics. It'll be a spot foul and bring up a new set of downs. So it's first and 10 now from about the Spartans 24. Closer to their 23. 49-48, Bandits trail by one. Whistle blows, so the clock starts again. Hollins is going to line up under center with Prohaska as his deep running back. Hollins sends his men to the line. It's Shepard and Epps. Hand off left side. Prohaska is going to be smothered in the backfield by Hammond. Sam Hammond. A bruiser on this defensive line today for the Spartans. Gets a big tackle for loss there. Almost sends Sioux City all the way back to the original line of scrimmage of this drive. Brings up second and about 13. Holland's going to her center again. Big Rashad Mungro is the center, the 6'6", 330-pounder. 
Hollis takes the snap, fakes the handoff. He's trying to bootleg right. He's firing over the sideline. Fred Bruno's there. He's not going to get to the line to gain, but he's going to get quite a bit of yardage. Get close there to about the 16-yard line. Hollins looks like he wanted a bootleg and was staring dead in the eye of a Colorado defender, Corey Henry, out of Florida Atlantic. And he just cut his losses, flipped it over to Bruno, got some yardage, makes it third and much more manageable. Hollins takes the snap in an empty backfield. He finds Bruno quick left side for the first down. Doesn't get much more, but it's enough for a fresh set. First and 10 from the 12 yard line for Sioux City here. 49 48, they trail Colorado with 10.04 to go. Shotgun formation here for Hollins. Perhaska on his right hip pocket. Bruno comes across the formation, jet sweep, fakes the handoff. Hollins trying to run again on a read option. A couple of players are trying to rip that ball away, but Hollins keeps the feet pushing. Brings up second down from about the six yard line here. Ga Goal is to get to the two, so it's a second and four. Collins gets the play call from Scott Jensen. Brings it into the huddle. Leslie Owusu out there, number seven, you see him. He joins Fred Bruno and Sammy Epps as wide receivers. Perhaska the running back on the left side of the quarterback, Hollins. Owusu and Bruno going to go in motion. Bruno wrapping around from left to right. So there's three receivers on the right side of the formation. Swings it out left side. Drew Prohaska hit hard, and the ball comes out. They're going to say the ball came out due to contact with the wall, but an absolute boomstick was laid on Drew Prohaska. Sent him parallel to the turf, flying into the wall. I believe that was Amari Silla who laid the hit on Prohaska. Referee is going to have a little talk, a little chit chat. Wait on the official ruling from the head official. And the play will be under review here. Use this as a media timeout for Sioux City. Get some fan engagement going as well during this review. Drew Prohaska was sent parallel to the ground off that hit. Waiting for a replay on the big screen here in the Tyson Event Center, but they can't show it until after the official ruling. Still waiting on the official ruling here. Referees have not come out of the tunnel. It's like both young fans who were taking part in that segment were able to hit their target, so congratulations to them. 49-48 your score. Interesting here. You just gotta think when did the referee blow the play dead? If they blew it dead before anybody recovered it, 
is another question. There's no guarantee it's even a fumble. I've not been able to see a replay in here. The officials are still looking at it. Another thing to think of is if the ball hits the boards, which it does very clearly go off the boards on the fumble. Prohaska was leveled by Silla. Finally able to get a chance to look at the replay. That is a clear fumble. It does come off the boards before it's recovered. What a hit. That's all I got to say. High impact action here in the National Arena League. And now we get the officials coming out of the locker room area. It was a catch and it was a fumble, but the ball hit the boards and was called dead. It's a dead ball once the loose ball hits the boards. No team was able to regain possession, so possession goes back to the team that had it. Collins lines up under center, and a lot of movement on the defensive line. They're calling offside on the defense. I think they're going to get Luke. Jeff Luke, the defensive lineman. Forty nine forty eight year score Colorado leading by one over Sioux City here with eight twenty seven and counting to go in the fourth quarter. Hollins under center power formation. Gronhagen the fullback handoff up the middle to Prohaska. He bounces off his own line and he's going to be brought down in the backfield. Good defense here from Colorado standing tall on the goal line. Collins going under center again. Gronhagen, the fullback. Handoff. Mines left side now. They have him for the power run. He's still pushing. He's lifted into the air by both teams. They were trying to push him in. He does not get in there. Brings up third down. Power formation still out there for Sioux City. This is four down territory potentially. 49-48 with how high power the Spartans offense has been. Hollins going up the middle. He's going to take it himself for his third rushing touchdown of the game. Hollins in there for six, and Sioux City takes the 54-49 advantage. The whistles are still blowing because there's still a fight for the ball at the bottom of the pile. Hammond comes up with it. He's arguing his case. A flags come in late. Flan zone penalty flags brought to you by Flans Entertainment. There was a lot of extracurriculars after the play. We'll see what's on. We'll wait on the official ruling.
White Hat seems to turn his mic on, so we're getting ready for the official ruling here. A lot of conversating still happening. 54-49. This is going to be an unsportsmanlike conduct after the play. Going against Colorado, it will be that foul will be banked and put after the after the kickoff. Sioux City going for two here. They lead by five. They're trying to make it a seven point game again. Oh, the referee just high pointed the ball. That gets a crowd cheer. That is the umpire in this game. Put a name to the catch. As soon as we can as the bandits are going for two. The umpire in this game is Lance Bloger. And now they're reviewing the touchdown. But it's been a fast paced, high energy game is Slowed down a bit here in the fourth quarter due to a couple reviews. 6.47 to go in the fourth. Bandits lead by five as it stands. That could change if the call is overturned. Take a look at penalties so far in this game as well as other things, turnovers. Let's just take a look at all team stats in this game so far. 15 to 15 on first downs. Sioux City holds the rushing yards advantage 79 to 13, but Colorado holds the pass yards advantage 235 to 41. Turnovers, it's one for Colorado, none so far for Sioux City. Penalties are even, six penalties called on each team. Sioux City has been assessed more yards against. They've lost 58 yards to penalties. Colorado has lost 44. Reviewing the play now, seeing if Josh Hollins is able to break the plane of the line of scrimmage. He's on top of a couple defenders, reaching his arms across. It's hard to tell. It's hard to tell where the ball is, I should say. The upper part of his body does get across the line of scrimmage before he touches the ground, but where's the ball at is the key. Remember at the end of that play, Sam Hammond thought he had the ball on a fumble recovery. So that's going to come up as well. The official's back out. Ruling on the field stands as called. Touchdown. Now the Bandits will go for two. Hollins in the shotgun. Prohaska on his right. Bruno wraps around. He's in motion with Sammy Epps. Hollins fakes the pitch, looks quick, trying to find Sammy F, so that's going to be incomplete. Flag's going to fly, though. It's the seventh penalty of the game against Colorado. It's another Flan Zone penalty flag brought to you by Flans Electronics. the 13th penalty total of this game. So it's going to be the seventh against Colorado. Take it off the board. There's only 12 penalties in this game still. They take that flag off the board. Each team still has six penalties assessed against them. Good defensive effort there made on the goal line. Knocking that ball away, it remains a five-point game, 49-54. to 54. Bandits lead. What, what else does this game have in store?
had to take a moment after something I just saw on the big screen. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta love Sioux City. The fans are the best. <laughs> Brayden Pines tees it up to kick off. Shirts are becoming optional all of a sudden at the Tyson Event Center. We kick off. That one's going to go over the end zone and out of play. <laughs> it's going to mean they started their own 20-yard line for Colorado. Didn't hit the didn't hit the rebound net. Didn't bounce before going over either. First and ten from the 20 for Colorado. I believe the Tyson Event Center is asking fans to put their shirts back on. Stop waving them in the air. It's been a fun night. A fun night of football. 54 to 49. It's been high scoring. We're over 100 points total in this one. 103 to be exact. Jason Whitaker, it feels like an eternity ago that he went down with an injury. It was just the last Colorado possession. Remember they banked the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty after the after the touchdown from Josh Hollins. So that is going to push them back to the 10 now for Colorado. First and 10 from their own 10. This is from the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty at the end of the touchdown run. Whitaker in an empty set here, takes the snap, looking right side. Now he's forced to scramble out the middle. No fear for Whitaker as he slides down there. Made a business decision. Saw Braden Mites coming down the pipe. Second and four now after the six yard run. Second and five after the five yard run, excuse me. See what Whitaker and the Spartans offense has here. 5.19 to go and counting in the fourth quarter. It's been a high scoring game all night long. Whitaker takes the snap. He's looking right side. Of course, a scramble out right, fires downfield. That's enough for a first down to Rarick. Down the right, down the right flank. He pushed along the boards out of play. Deontay Rarick. First and 10 from the midfield stripe. It's going to be at the 25 yard line. Whitaker in the shotgun again. Two receivers go in motion. Has to reach out for that snap. Finds Khalil Hayes near the line to gain and knocked out along the boards. breaks the huddle. He's going to be in an empty set here, second and short for Colorado. He's about two for a new set of downs. Four receivers all to the left of the formation. Overload for the Spartans. Whitaker comes back, fires middle of the end zone. Khalil Hayes is there and makes the grab. Six more up for Colorado. It's 55-54. The scoring is not done here in Sioux City. 3.48 to go in the fourth. Neither offense refuses to stay out of the end zone. 55 to 54. Jason Whitaker now up to 274 yards and six touchdown passes. 19 for 26 with one pick as well. Handoff of the gut is Jeff Luke. He gets into the end zone. The offense, the, the lineman in general, he plays O-line and D-line off the fullback dive. Flag's going to fly before the play. The 
Boys. Sioux City fans are asking for the play to be moved back. Usually if it's on the offense, they blow the play dead. Referee is still conferring right about the 10 yard line. There's another Flan Zone penalty flag brought to you by Flans Electronics. So it'll be an illegal formation against the offense. So they'll retry the point after attempt. Still 55-54. Going for two would make it a three-point game. It's where the Bandits would have to score a touchdown to go back on top. Sioux City coming into this game was 2-0 on the year. Tied atop the league. Colorado came in at 0-2 with two hard-fought matchups against two of the other top teams in the league in Carolina and Omaha. Omaha tied with the Bandits for the top spot in the league. Darian Crew to kick here. The extra point. They make it a two-point game. Kick is up for Crew. Blocked. Scramble for the ball. It's picked up by Newble. Is he able to get in? He's going to get two. He's not going to get there. Antonio Pierce with the saving tackle. Great initial effort by the Bandits to block the extra point. Heads up play by Newbold though to pick it up, realize it's live and try to get into the end zone almost. Turn it into a two point conversion. 55-54, the score remains, Spartans up one. Fifty-five, fifty-four here in Sioux City. 109 points. If you like offense, this is the place to be. And from the looks of it, Colorado Spartans games are the place to be if you like throwing the ball around the yard. Jason Whitaker has been unreal to start the season. Another great performance today. He's over 270 yards passing. 274 to be exact. Six touchdowns, 19 for 26 with one pick. He also has four carries for six yards and two more touchdowns. Eight touchdowns have been scored by Colorado. All of them have Jason Whitaker's name next to them in some way, shape, or form. I guess I was wrong. I guess I was wrong. <laughs> Still. It's a whole new party going on here in Sioux City. <laughs> I don't even know what to say anymore, man. Thank you for joining us this evening on the National Arena League. Sioux City Bandits football taking on the Colorado Spartans. It's an entertaining show on the field, and depending on who you ask, an entertaining show off of it as well. We got to kick off here. Darian Cruz got to kick this one away. Back deep to return is Fred Bruno and Landon Freeman, both very dangerous. Both of them have kick returns for a touchdown today. Let's see what Cruz's plan is here. Crow, excuse me, it's a squib kick. Onside goes to Sherman Gilbert. He picks it up, trying to get some blockers on the left side. He slips down the 10 yard line. There is a penalty flag on the play. Looks like it's, looks like it's signaled against the kicking team. You assume Sioux City would just decline it, take the ball at the 10-yard line. Gutsy play by the Spartans there, trying to get the ball back. Up one point with 3.42 to go. The penalty will be assessed as half a distance to the goal, actually, since Sioux City was able to recover. So it's first and goal from the five to start. See on the replay there, the kick, kick coverage player on the far side of the formation 
as the ball is kicked, has already crossed the goal line. That is offside on the kickoff. Hollins is going to line up under center with Prohaska, the deep back. Shepard and Bruno going to be in motion. Sammy Epps, the wide receiver on the line of scrimmage. A little confusion for the Spartans defense as Bruno runs up, takes the handoff off the right side. Jet sweep. The franchise is in for six. Another touchdown for Fred Bruno. Bruno always delivers. 60 to 55. Sioux City's up five here inside the Tyson Event Center. 3 10 to go in the fourth. I need to start fact checking the record for most points scored in a single game for the Bandits. Or combined points between two teams, I should say. 60 to 55, 115 are on the board right now. Bandits are going for two, would make it a seven point ball game with 3.10 to go in the fourth. Hollins breaks the huddle, he's gonna line up in the shotgun, Prohaska on his right, Shepard and Bruno in motion. When he sends him, Bruno wraps around. That means trips on the right side. Hollins, design run off the left side. Can he beat his man to the corner? He does. He gets in there for the two-point conversion. Joshua Hollins. High pressure situation. Pressure makes diamonds. He's 18 carat right now for Josh Hollins. 62 to 55, the Bandits up seven. And now there's a whole section of fans with their shirts off. Mine is staying on. You're not going to see it. Don't even ask. <laughs> this, this has been such a night here at the Tyson Event Center. I can't even fully describe it. It. I know I've mentioned it before. I didn't want to talk about it too much. I didn't want to make this about me. This is my birthday today. I turned 23. <laughs> This has been one of the most entertaining things I've been a part of in a long time, regardless of league, regardless of sport. The product on the field, some of the fans off of it. It's been so much fun today. Thank you all for joining us here in the National Arena League. Sioux City Bandits football taking on the Colorado Spartans. It's a seven point game with 3.10 to go, 62 to 55. to kick off here. High end over end kick, drifting towards the back of the end zone. It will be received by Newbold, just in front of the boards. Gets out to the five, puts on the brakes a little bit, now gets out to the sideline. He's pushed up along the boards, out of play. It'll be first and 10 from about the 13 yard line. Be between the 13 and 14 here. And the Colorado Spartans answer. They have basically every other time. This 62-55 ball game. Whitaker in the shotgun here. Got the running back Campbell on his left, sends his man to the line. Can Whitaker make more magic happen? Steps up, flips it over to Campbell. He's got a lot of space. First down and more. Gets past the midfield stripe and into Bandit's territory. Big play there for Campbell. First and Colorado 20, from the Bandit's 24-yard line for Colorado. Under two minutes to go in this fourth quarter. Spartans taking their time, letting that clock drain a little bit. Whitaker takes the snap, chest high, looks right side, has a man open. I think he was expecting him to stop his route on the far side, Rarick, and you can even see he tapped his chest. Let his quarterback know that's my bad. Those timing routes like that, you need to be in form. Rarick was running downfield. Looks like Whitaker was expecting him to stop his momentum just at the sticks for a little quick curl route. And 
It looks like they're gonna let this go to the one minute warning in Sioux City. It's crunch time, 62-55. We are at the one minute warning. Normal football timing rules remaining. There's still a lot of time left. A minute under normal football rules, under normal timing rules. It's an eternity in arena football. Let's give a stat update on this game. Looking at both these teams. We'll start with the Spartans since they're on offense. Jason Whitaker, 20 for 28, six touchdowns, one interception, 268, or 286 yards through the air. He also has two touchdowns on the ground on six yards on four carries. Khalil Hayes, the leading receiver right now, eight catches, 105 yards and two touchdowns on the long of 33. He's followed by Steven Newbold, four catches for 88 yards, two touchdowns on the long of 40. Newbold doesn't have a catch yet in the second half of play. Something to keep an eye on here. As the bandits have clued in on him, Helly Hayes has been getting open more. Now see if Newbold can make a fact, make a difference in this drive for Colorado. Joshua Hollis for Sioux City is nine for 11, 44 yards and a touchdown through the air. He's also got 44 yards on the ground, three more touchdowns rushing on seven carries. Fred Bruno, the leading receiver, four catches for 22 yards. Also a couple kick return touchdowns for Sioux City today. Bruno has one kick return touchdown of 50 yards, and Landon Freeman has the other of 56 yards. In total for Sioux City, they have 256 yards just on kick returns today, and two touchdowns. Both teams have retaken the field. Shotgun for Whitaker. Takes the snap, Bandits fans on their feet. Looking over the middle of the field, has Rarick. He's got some space, gets around one defender, gets past the first down marker before he is chopped down by Sherman Gilbert. The clock never started here. One second was taken off the clock. I don't think that play took one second. I'm no expert in time. So after the referees conferred, they're gonna reset the clock to 54 seconds and then restart the clock on the referee's whistle. Clock has started up again here in Sioux City. We're under 50 seconds to go in a seven point game, 62 to 55. It's in the cards, so I got to mention it. Overtime is possible. <laughs> Snap taken, Whitaker. Flags are going to fly. Most likely illegal defense. Got a free play, knocked away by Antonio Pierce. But it's going to be some yards for Colorado here, as I believe is illegal defense going to be called against Sioux City. It's a Flan Zone penalty flag brought to you by Flans Electronics. I mean, offside against the defense. They got Ossie Tapua. Going to march off five yards for the Spartans here. Bring up first and five. For about the six-yard line here. Colorado can get another first down still if they get to the one-yard line. 29 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. Whitaker going to go empty here. Every receiver on the team is split out wide to the right. Whitaker in the empty set, sends his men to the line, and there's going to be Coach Loban not out there as a defensive coordinator. Coach Tonga's taken over. He's the one that called the timeout. Got 
Timeout here, Sioux City. They still got two remaining here in this fourth quarter of play. 29 seconds to go, 62-55. Colorado trailing by five. By, by seven, excuse me. Double fives on my brain. See what the Bandits have drawn up here. If Colorado goes back to that same formation with the quad box on the, far, on the right side. Retaking the field here is Colorado. They're in the same formation. Two receivers on the line of scrimmage to the right. Two will go in motion. Whitaker in an empty set in the backfield. Whitaker takes the snap, looking right side. A lot of crosses going over the middle. He's stepping up in the pocket, trying to find somebody open. Nobody there. He's forced to slide down. There's a flag flying in the end zone. See who this flag is on. 22 seconds on the clock now after that play. <laughs> Offset holding calls here. One on the offense and one on the defense. One goes against a Colorado Spartans offensive lineman and one of them goes against Sherman Gilbert for the Bandits defense. We're just going to re-rack, repack, and restack them. Replay the down. Colorado breaks the huddle here. They got short time on the play clock, only 10 seconds left on it. Coach Shaw telling him to hustle up. Whitaker in an empty set, same formation as last play. They get the snap off. Whitaker looking over the middle now, right side. Has somebody back at the end zone. That's Khalil Hayes, and that one will put the Spartans down one here, pending the extra point. 62 61. 18 seconds to go in quarter four. Great play for Whitaker and the Spartans there. He just waited. He had his eyes on Hayes the entire way out. He knew the route combination would spring him open. Colorado taking a timeout here. They're going to think this over. Do you go for one? Do you tie the game? Or do you go for two? Go for the win. There's no guarantee of that either. You go for two and you don't get it. Now you're behind the eight ball entirely. You go for two and do get it. You're up 63-62. This is where Coach Shaw earns his paycheck. Tough decisions like this. is still in that huddle with Coach Shaw. Well, the Spartans are going for two from the looks of it. Got to think back to earlier on in this game. Braden Mites hitting a deuce earlier in this game for Sioux City. Now that deuce hits 60 to 61 right now, Colorado advantage. As 
a crucial play earlier on for Braden Mainz. Going for it here is Colorado. They got the big man. Jeff Luke at fullback. Campbell the deep back. Handoff to Luke. Up the middle. He's brought down before the goal line. He's not going to get there. Sioux City leads 62 to 61. The Bandits standing tall at the goal line again. In a game that's been all about offense, is a defensive play going to be what decides it on a two-point conversion? 62 to 61, the Bandits lead after that failed two-point conversion. The game is not over. Colorado most likely going for an onside kick here. I say most likely, I guarantee it. What a defensive stand for the Bandits. Power run there from the goal line with Jeff Luke. Jeff Luke does have a touchdown in this game. He declared as an offensive lineman earlier on and caught a pass for a 10 yard touchdown. If this game does end in this score line with 18 seconds left, there's still plenty of time for things to change. Jason Whitaker deserves all the flowers for Colorado. 22 for 30, 305 yards passing and seven touchdowns. Let's have that one interception as well. It's one of only two drives for Colorado that hasn't ended in points, but the Bandits lead 62 to 61 with a crucial kick coming here. All hands team on the field for Sioux City. Darian Crow with potentially one of the biggest kicks of the season for him. It's onside, it's bouncing, and there's a whistle blown. Sioux City took a timeout. Did seem like there was a little confusion on the kick coverage team for Sioux City. Because they didn't have anybody back deep initially in case they kicked the ball over their heads. 62-61, 123 points on the board. This has been an exceptional game offensively for both teams. It's been a lot of fun to be here tonight for the National Arena League. 62 to 61, 18 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. Braden Butler here for the Sioux City Bandits. Thank you. Thank you all for tuning in. I think with Crow too, if he has the leg, he could try for a deuce. But after showing onside in that first kick, I don't wonder if they go back to it here. Crow. Runs up, onside, high bouncer. Colorado almost got there. It's bouncing along the boards. Who's going to get it? Span was down for the Bandits. A flag's down on the field. Crow looked upset. That's a Flan zone penalty flag brought to you by Front Flans Electronics. Was it touched too early? Did it get touched before it went 10 yards? It might have. No, that's not the call. So 
So it's an offside against Colorado and with only one timeout left for the Spartans. That should do it here from Sioux City, 62 to 61. One of the most high scoring games I've ever been on the broadcast for, 62-61. Things could still change, but it's looking like Sioux City's gonna get out of here with a one point victory. One more timeout taken. Gotta talk a little more here. What a performance in this game for both teams, but I keep going back to Jason Whitaker. He threw the ball all over the yard today. He took a big hit earlier on, had to leave the game, was back out there by the next drive for, for Colorado. He threw a touchdown on that big hit as well. Pinpoint accuracy downfield with a defensive lineman, or the linebacker, excuse me, bearing down on you at full speed, hit it on the money to Khalil Hayes for a touchdown on that play. Whitaker, if the game ends here, he doesn't get the ball back. 22 for 30 for 305 yards, seven touchdowns, two more on the ground. Jason Whitaker, nine total touchdowns. It's tough for a guy like that to think that might not be enough. Josh Hollins goes under center here, mines the fullback. Freeman and Prohaska, the deep back, split in the backfield. Hollins going to hand it off to Prohaska. He's going to put his head down. He's just going to fall to the turf and cover the ball at the three-yard line. Timeout, I believe is gonna be taken by Colorado, which makes sense. If you're gonna, they're gonna snap the ball, they're gonna try handing it off for the Bandits. There's a miss snap, a miss handle on the ball. The defensive lineman's able to get to the running back before he's able to get to the ground and rip it away. There are still possibilities for Colorado. Coach Shaw wants to keep all those open. Colorado. You kind of feel for the Spartans if this ends in a one-point loss. They've played three great weeks of football. This one, probably their best, and they're going to be 0-3 to show for it, barring a miracle. Hollins goes under center. Going to take the snap, hand off Prohaska, up the gut. They were going to let him score, but he falls down. He and Colorado is even calling it. They're trying to give him the touchdown, but that is going to do it. It ends at the one yard line in a one point game, 62 to 61, 123 points combined between the Bandits and the Spartans. One of the most entertaining games I have ever been a part of. Thank you all for joining us this evening here on for the National Arena League, the Sioux City Bandits football. Let's talk a couple things post game here. Obviously the final score is 62, 61. Let's look at the team offensive statistics for both squads. 21st downs for Colorado, 16 for the Bandits. Colorado only ran the ball nine times for 18 yards compared to the Bandits, 23 times for 90 yards. Four yards per rush for Sioux City, two yards per rush for Colorado. 301 passing yards is gonna be your big number today. 10 yards per pass, 13.7 per completion for Colorado. Sioux City. Use the short passing game a lot more, only 41 yards through the air on nine completions, 4.6 per yards per completion. 319 yards on offense for Colorado, 130 yards on offense for the Sioux City Bandits. It, it doesn't seem fair to Colorado with the performance they put on on offense that it ends 62 to 61. But unfortunately, that's just football. Look at the big discrepancy. We could talk about 301 pass, uh, 300, over 300 yards of offense compared to 130 for Colorado and Sioux City. Kick returns, go back and look at them. They were big today. Two kick return touchdowns for the Bandits, one from Bruno, one from Freeman, 256.